therapist. Ah, <sighs> this is the life. Wait a sec. Isn't something important supposed to happen today? Oh, today's our big day! We're supposed to leave the Fortress of Meripede! Come on, we've got to go complete the release procedures now! Please, sign here. This document will be effective immediately upon signing, and you two may exit the Fortress of Meripede via the regular channels. It's been so long since we've been to the surface! Let's hurry up and... What's happening? <sighs> I'm fine, thanks. But I wonder what that tremor was just now. Let's go ask the Duke! Your Grace? Ah, good to see you two. Is there something you wish to see me about? Yeah, what was with that earthquake just now? Ah, that. The tremor didn't originate from the seafloor. In fact, it seems it came from the surface. Over the years of serving as the warden here, I have developed a sense for distinguishing between what occurs on the surface and what occurs underwater. Besides, the seal that Monsieur Neuvillette set in place won't fail so easily. So the fortress is okay? If you recall our last incident, if there really were a problem, there would be crowds of inmates in a panic right now. Okay, seems we need to get back up to the surface and ask about what happened. Uh, by the way, do you know what day it is today? Hmm, I believe today is this month's pipe cleaning day. Wait, seriously? Ah, yes. Have you completed your release papers? Yep. Uh, it's you two. Uh, are you leaving now? That's right! Today is our last day in prison! But now that Paimon says that, it doesn't feel like we were confined here. It's actually been pretty nice! Oh yeah, Paimon feels fond of this place now! Well then be sure to come back and visit. I'll miss you. If you've signed the release papers, then you're free to go. The guards will escort you out. You're not going to see us off? <laughs> I knew you'd ask. All right, sure. Let's go. Well, you actually agreed. Uh, no worries, you must be busy. Paimon was just joking. Ah, so you do have a polite side, I see. <laughs> After being down here for so long, I imagine you must feel like you're lacking companionship. Shall I come along too? Yeah, don't worry, we'll come back to see you. Uh, Paimon really likes the cafeteria here. The chefs sure do know how to make good grub! I hope you won't be here as convicts the next time I see you. We'll do our best to stay out of trouble! Well, it seems our work in the Fortress of Meripede is finished! That's the end of another chapter in our journey! And since Nervalev was the one who asked us to come here, we should probably go report to him now. Next up, the Palais Marmonia! You're going to see Monsieur Nervilette? <laughs> Please pass on our kind regards. I'm sure just your regards will do, no? Hmm, I believe it would be the polite thing to do. You're right. I've heard the Palais has been terribly busy these days. Tell him that I hope he hasn't been overwhelmed by the recent string of troubles. The Palais Marmonia sure is buzzing with activity today! Halt! Huh? Oh, uh, it's you two. <laughs> Apologies, Monsieur Nirvillet did say you'd be welcome at any time. Excuse me, uh, would you mind helping me take a look at this report? I'll be right there. Sorry, I've got my hands full here. You can see yourselves in. Everyone's so busy. Seems a lot has been happening. Never 
hello. You've come at the right time, but you'll have to wait for just a moment, as there are some urgent matters I must tend to first. In the meantime, please, have a seat. If you'd like to have something to drink, let the Melusine outside know. That's all right, we just ate. Very well, then. Let's take a break over there while we wait for him to finish his work. All right. That should wrap things up for now. Are you done with your work? Yes. Sorry to keep you waiting. Today should be the day you were released from the Fortress of Meripede. And it appears that you've managed to complete all the release paperwork. That's right! And we came here to see you right away! Hmm. A massive whale. Judging from your description, that cannot have occurred in any ordinary waters, but rather something like the Primordial Sea. A whale of that size and shape cannot usually be found in the waters of Tevat. Therefore, we can only assume that Child is presently immersed in Primordial Seawater. Immersed in Primordial Seawater? What the hell? And is he okay? Most people wouldn't be capable of entering in the first place. I'm not completely sure how he could have gotten there myself. Yes? What is it? Ah, oh, right! Paimon felt it too! We asked the Duke and he said it wasn't from underwater, so we figured you might know something about it! It turns out that I have just received a report about this particular matter. In fact, that's exactly what I was busy with a moment ago. The source of the tremor was here on the surface, near Poisson. After the shaking stopped, the water levels in the Poisson area rose at an alarming rate. The water levels rose? Oh no! What about all the people there? Fortunately, the water levels only rose for a short period of time, and have already returned to normal now. However, I still have a bad feeling about the whole phenomenon. If the change in water levels is connected with the leaking primordial seawater, and the situation in Poisson may be much worse than it appears. Navia should be in Poisson, right? We need to go check on her! I would also like to go there as soon as possible, but I'm afraid I can't leave just yet. We must immediately formulate disaster prevention plans for the surrounding coastal areas to avoid potential catastrophes. I'll have to ask you two to go to Poisson first. I'll meet you there to check on the situation once I finish things here. Please be careful. Oh no! What happened here? Navia should be around here, right? We need to make sure she's still... Uh, Paimon means we need to check on her. We haven't seen a single soul all the way here. Oh, this is getting scary. <laughs> what will I ever do now? Look, there's someone on the roof over there. Just stay put. We're coming up. Watch your balance. <sighs> all right. Just hurry. I'm not young anymore. How will I survive on my own? <laughs> my Desiree! Oh, he looks pretty sad. <laughs> my leg! <laughs> my leg! How could this have happened? <laughs> it hurts! <laughs> Just hang in there. Help is on the way. You can hold my hand if it makes you feel better. Oh, it 
It's Navia! She's over there! Hey, Navia! Are you okay? <sighs> You're here. We heard there was a situation in Poisson, so we came as quickly as we could! Yes. As you can see, the water level suddenly rose. It caused quite the disturbance, in fact. Demoiselle! There was a wounded resident next to a building southeast of here. We've already transported him to safety, but we've run out of medical supplies. He's wounded? How badly? He fell, so it's probably a broken leg. He's pretty shaken up. When the water level rose, he desperately climbed up to the roof. Once the water receded and he saw the ground, he became terrified and eventually... He jumped down then. Find the leader of Squad 1 and tell him to take the wounded resident to see a doctor. He should know where to go. Understood. I'll take over his search and rescue mission in the meantime. All right, you'll be in charge. I'm sorry. Where were we? Uh, the situation in Poisson? Ah, uh, right. Allow me to explain. A little earlier, we suddenly heard a loud noise. At first, everyone thought that something might have exploded in the waterways. But before we knew it, water started pouring out from everywhere. The rushing water seemed a little odd, almost like the unique color of primordial seawater. Some people didn't realize the danger and thought it was just ordinary water leaking from somewhere. Everyone on the street who happened to be close to the water didn't have a chance to escape. As the water levels rose, they suddenly disappeared. They were all dissolved. Those who realized what was happening started to flee in a panic, desperately trying to get to higher ground. Many were injured in the stampede and some, some people fell from significant heights. The Spina di Rosula initiated rescue operations as quickly as possible, but there have been a lot of casualties. Fortunately, the water began to recede after some time, and the chaos came to an end. The water that flooded the area contained primordial seawater, so the lower levels of Poisson are still hazardous. To ensure everyone's safety, I've asked the people there to leave as soon as possible. No one knows if this could happen again. All we can do for now is try our best to help evacuate the residents. We still haven't completed the headcount, but we'll have some numbers soon. How awful. And all of this just came out of nowhere. It was quite frightening indeed. I only wish that everything that just happened was a bad dream. Is there we can help Navia? Thank you for being so willing to help in a moment of crisis like this. You don't know how much it means to me. I really can't express how grateful I am. Don't say that, Navia. That's what friends are for. <sighs> Demoiselle! We've got a situation here! Uh, I'll be right there! Sorry, I, I need to go for now. And out she goes! Seems it might be a while before she can take a break.
Okay, the wounded are being tended to, and we finished a preliminary headcount. More support has just arrived, so I suppose I finally have a moment to focus on my own matters. Of course, we should remain ready for anything, and continue doing our best to rescue others. I'll be sure to have everyone at the Spina di Rosula ready to render assistance. Traveler, Paimon, would you two accompany me to my father's grave for a moment? Huh? Right now? Thank you. Not a lot of people here, huh? Well, given the time of day and the whole situation in Poisson, Paimon doesn't think there'd be a ton of people here visiting graves. Right. That's how things are now. The living are so exhausted that they've no strength to spare any words for the dead. Um, Navia? <laughs> Navia, what's wrong? Sorry, I... I just... Malus and Silver, they won't ever come back here again. What should I do, Papa? Huh? What happened to them? Everyone agreed on the rescue plan, but still, I was the one who initiated it. They were helping evacuate the residents, but they couldn't leave in time. And... And they were caught in the seawater. <laughs> what, what should we do? I've known them for so long. And I know they weren't afraid. But... But... I could at least hold a funeral for my father, and I know where he rests. But as for Malus and Silver, they're just... gone. I just can't... Everything looks so clean after it rains. Even the gravestones. I didn't expect that you'd enjoy a glass of red wine in front of Master Callus' grave. I can understand. Besides, the scenery here isn't half bad. See? It's not just me. I always want to bring something when I visit Papa. Perhaps we might even have a picnic. He wouldn't be angry, would he? Ah, how could Master ever be upset with you, Demoiselle? Yet, the cemetery is the home of those who have passed, is it not? Everyone ends up here sooner or later, no matter who you are. Buying yourself a plot in advance, are you? <laughs> no need yet. But when I do, I hope you'll let me be buried beside Master Callus, Demoiselle. Hey, stop joking around. I'm quite serious. That way, it'll save us both the trip to see each other whenever you visit your father's grave. That makes sense. In that case, could I be buried on his other side? After all, besides you, Demoiselle, the two of us could certainly be considered Master's closest companions, no? Personally, I believe we fill those shoes just fine. <laughs> Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Seriously? All right, all right, I'll remember your requests. But I'd really prefer not to talk about this stuff. And what do you mean by saving me a trip? I'd make the journey even if I had to visit you two somewhere else. I'd promise to let them rest in peace here. But here I am breaking that promise. <sighs> I'm sorry for letting you see me in a mess like this. I don't usually cry, really. Paimon doesn't know how to help you feel better, but, well, she understands how you feel. 
I had always thought I could make my wishes come true. But now that I think about it, that never solely relied on me. Many things can only be accomplished with someone else's help. Malus and Silver have helped me so much. But by contrast, I could do nothing for them. I'm so sorry. You can spend as much time as you need here, Navia. We'll stay with you. Thank you. Right now, you don't know how much that means. By the way, you can have a look at this. It's a list of victims from the incident that took place here. Obana, Khan, Burnett, Giverny, Francine, Karina, Daisy Ray, Joanville, Julianne, Esson, as well as Malus and Silver. So, everyone else is safe. But still... It's okay. I, I know what you're thinking. And you're right. We lost Malus and Silver. But we were able to save more than we anticipated. The overall outcome indicates that the cost was worth it. Right! Don't think that way, Navia. One person might be saved at the expense of another, sure, but that isn't something we should ever consider a trade. Malus and Silver were not the price for saving anyone. They're heroes. You're right. Thank you, Paimon. What you said just now was pretty amazing, actually. I'll remember your words. Oh, uh... Really? Seems you've become more eloquent in the time since we last met. Uh, the knave? What are you doing here? Ah, uh, is everything going well on your side? Yes, my people are carrying out the mission according to your request. All the residents of Poisson have been evacuated, and we are preparing to relocate them to higher ground. As for these supplies, we have everything taken care of. There is no need to worry. Thank you very much. Wait, do you two know each other? We just met recently. Right, Miss Navia? Hmm, usually, I would call this a coincidental encounter. But that doesn't quite fit this time. Besides, it never even crossed my mind that a Fatui Harbinger would come looking for me. Thanks to the Knave, Spina di Rosula received generous support from the Fatui, which allowed us to complete the rescue and evacuation work so quickly. Mutual aid is essential to fostering positive developments. We were already in the area, in any case, so it was nothing. That said, I must say that you're a lot sharper than you let on. I'm sure you understand what I mean. I apologize for all the ways in which I tested you previously. We've never worked with a Fatui before, and it's extremely important for us to know who we're working with. My subordinates have reported that Fatui soldiers have been observing water levels and taking head counts in various locations. I hear that they've also prepared a large amount of emergency supplies. I'm quite surprised. This is nothing to brag about, nor do I intend to. It is simply the way of powerful organizations to act forcefully, whether they are doing good or ill. You've witnessed that firsthand, in any case. As I've told this traveler before, I know of the prophecy, and I intend to prevent the impending disaster. Lending your organization a hand was a natural first step in accomplishing that. As such, do not be troubled by this token of our sincerity. Perhaps one day, you'll also be able to help me in the same way. Without your help, there would have been many more casualties. I won't forget your kindness. Furthermore, I sincerely regret what happened to Malus and Silver. I only wish that my people could have arrived a little earlier to prevent this from happening. Don't say that. You and your subordinates did everything you could. As Paimon said, Malus and Silver didn't choose to sacrifice themselves for any specific person. 
and they weren't the price paid for other salvation. They chose to become heroes themselves. I've never liked hearing people put it that way. It's like trying to relieve pain by saying some noble-sounding words. But right now, there's nothing more suitable. They really did become heroes. You're right. I'm sorry for your loss, Miss Navia. Water is life to Fontaine's people, and it also spells disaster. It's no wonder that people always say that prophecies represent fate. Fortunately, I've never been one for such opinions. So, you're one who will try to change fate then? Of course. That is why I'm going to Hotel Bouffe de Terre. I still have some things to take care of, and the children need my attention. By the way, Traveler, Paimon, one more thing. Alright, then we'll just... Uh... Huh? This isn't right. Paimon thought you would ask us to walk with you for a moment so you could tell us something in private. That is a clever and useful conversation technique, which I do like to use when necessary. But there's no need today. It would not hurt to have Miss Navia listening in. Traveler, I'm sure you remember that I said we could work together when we had the chance. You and I both know that there may be issues with the Primordial Sea. Previously, it was the Fortress of Meripede's Sluice Gate, and this time it was the Water Levels in Poisson. These are both signals. Indeed. Allow me to share the latest intel I've received from the House of the Hearth's Intelligence Network with you. During some recent investigations, a child claimed to have discovered some ruins near Poisson. The ruins date back to ancient times, and seem to be worth investigating in many ways. Judging by the dating of the ruins, they may be related to the prophecy and the coming crisis. The situation is becoming more urgent, so any pertinent information will prove extremely precious. My people initially came to prepare for ruin exploration. Unexpectedly, this disaster struck. And at present, we're all busy prioritizing the rescue effort. So that's why the Fatui were already in Poisson. I wanted to take the children along, but unfortunately, Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet have all been dispatched to higher ground to assist affected residents. Linny told me that outside of the house, the person they trust most is you. Which is why I want to give you this task. The House of the Hearths members see each other as family, but Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet said that they also see you as such, even though you are not from the House. I'm sure you already understand how earnest they consider their friendship with you to be. Oh! That somehow makes Paimon feel kinda happy! The intel I just shared about the ruins could fetch a high price. Oh, but since the children consider you family, it's only natural that I freely share it with you. Got it! So all we gotta do is go to some ruins, right? Pfft, we can handle that! Excuse me, but may I tag along? You wish to join, Miss Navia? But are you sure you're up to exploring some ruins? You need to rest! Well, I'm sad, yes, but... I can't just go back and plop myself into a chair by the roadside and do nothing. There's no point in being depressed while we still have a disaster on our hands. As my father's successor, I must live up to the hopes he had in me. Besides, I'm also doing this for myself. I need something, a distraction, to keep my mind off Malus and Silver. Since you put it that way, I have no objections. What do you say, Traveler? Alright, the ruins are to the south of Poisson. Here's the map. Okay, the three of us will handle it. Come on, let's pack up and get going! So, are these the ruins the Knave was talking about? Whoa, talk about old! They seem to be pretty ancient, alright. Let's go in and have a look. 
Just be careful. This place has also been contaminated by primordial seawater. Yeah. And a lot of it, too. A Fontanian would most likely dissolve the moment they fell in. Right! You can't go down if there's primordial seawater! It's too dangerous and it won't be any help for you to just stay here! Uh, don't get by my wrong. We're not saying you're useless. It's just that... No, you're right. I can't do anything in this situation. I'll leave this to you. That complicates things. Maybe the only way left is forward. In that case, do you want to wait for us here? Mm, uh, the water levels here are unstable, and there's a chance the water will rise. So staying here wouldn't be safe either. I'll go together with you. Perhaps we'll find the exit just up ahead. All right. Come with us for now then, but please be careful. <clears throat> Demoiselle? Huh? Demoiselle, what are you doing here by yourself? Would you be standing here till dark if I hadn't come to get you? Maybe she just wants some time to herself, Malus. Hmm? Oh, uh, was I... Was I sleeping? Yes, it would appear so. Uh, I must be tired. That's quite possible. However, you were the one that suggested we go out for a walk. Oh, right. I nearly forgot. <sighs> it must have slipped my mind when I dozed off. I haven't had a nap today yet. Uh, have I? This is a familiar feeling, yet something's a little strange. Is something the matter, demoiselle? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm fine. I was just trying to recall why we came out for a walk. Do you remember Mr. Giverny? He'd requested our help before with foreign merchants who had a debt dispute with him, and we'd resolved the matter not long ago. We were headed to see how things were going with him at the moment. Ah, oh, right. Yes. I remember now. Oh? Miss Navia? Ah, uh, Mr. Malus. And Mr. Silver, too. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. Uh, how have you been? I've been great. Thanks to your help, those bothersome merchants finally realized that I wasn't the one they were looking for. Why, I wasn't even the guarantor for that person. They were knocking at my door day and night. Even my neighbor, Obuna, was getting fed up with them. Sometimes, force is required to calm someone down and get them to listen to what you have to say. <laughs> That's right. Oh, by the way, Burnett, what was it that you wanted to give to Miss Navia again? Oh, oh yes. One moment, I have it right here. Miss Navia, these are some flower seeds that I prepared. Please take them. They're a very good variety, and they'll become very big and beautiful once they bloom. I don't know what we would have done without your help, so this is a little token of our appreciation. I hope you won't refuse. Ah, did you cultivate them yourself? Thank you so much. I'll certainly take them. Malus, we do still have some empty flower pots at home, right? 
<laughs> Why, we can have as many pots as you'd like, demoiselle. Perfect. In that case, we'll swap out some of the decorative plants for some of Mrs. Burnett's flowers. Very well. Wait. Something seems to be off here. Excuse me, madam. If I'm not mistaken, your name is Burnett, correct? That's right. Is something wrong? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. This is the first time we've ever met, but your name seemed familiar to me. I must have heard it when I was discussing things with your husband previously. I've heard this name before. Sometime recently, I'm sure of it. And why are there so few people around here? Where did everyone go? We must mind the time, demoiselle. We still have important things to attend to today. Huh? Uh, we do? Like what? Well, now, did you forget? Miss Navia, here you are! I've been looking for you. Please, come to the Opera House. Your trial is about to begin. My trial? Wait, wh why would I need to go to the Opera House? Yes, she's right, Demoiselle. It's just about time now, so we should get going. Oh? Uh, all right, then. Look, it's Navia! She's here! And her two attendants are with her! <sighs> Goodness, everyone's finally here. There sure are a lot of people here to see the trial. And they all seem to be oddly... excited about something. I even know some of these people. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen. Why are so many people here? And why do I have no recollection of this case? And as for the judge... Uh, huh? Where's Monsieur Nervillette? Please sit in the defendant's seat. Don't worry, Silver and I shall accompany you. All right. But are you sure you can stand behind me? Typically, it wouldn't be allowed, but today is an exception. Hey, what kind of place do they think this is? Come on, do they have any idea what they're doing? Seriously? <sighs> Enough with the whispering! <sighs> Could someone please tell me where Monsieur Nervillette is? And why I am standing trial? My dear Miss Navia, have you not yet realized what you've done? In that case, allow me to explain. As all here know, you are Master Callus's successor, the head of the Spina di Rasula, someone held in high regard by every soul in Poisson. After you took over the Spina, you treated all of us just like the late Master Callus had. If anyone in need reached out to you for help, you responded. Not only you, but your butler, your subordinates, Nearly everyone in the Spina di Rasula fought for the well-being of those in Poisson. <laughs> Wait a moment. Aren't you just proving that I'm a good person? Yes, correct. Absolutely right. And that is why you stand accused. You have helped so many people get through so many difficulties. You are one with us. We are inseparable. We are one big family, all of us who are from Poisson, inextricably linked. And with you being so important, we couldn't possibly do without you. Therefore, this fair and honorable court shall declare you guilty, and you shall stay here. You will be together with us forever. Huh? What are you saying? Uh, uh... Everything you have said is correct. I have indeed done a lot for my hometown, and I would be willing to be with you all, but what is the purpose of having me stand here like this? What is there to discuss? Ah, oh, well, 
If that's what you think, then I have no further comments. <gasps> How wonderful, Miss Navia! <laughs> <laughs> know all these people. Why are they laughing? I seem to remember now. Yes, I get it. This trial is... Wait just a moment. This isn't right! Uh, Malus? What was that, Mr. Malus? Our conclusion is very clear and unanimous. Let the court judge her now. She's guilty! Stay here, Navia! You're one of us! Demoiselle, don't admit guilt. This trial means to keep you here forever. I wish to exercise my right to defend Our Lady. Mr. Swanville, you only know of Navia's goodness, but nothing of her utterly independent mind. She was born a free and independent spirit. She has never been tied down by anything. Indeed, even the death of Master Callus couldn't stop her. Her actions cannot serve as proof that she identifies herself as part of any group. She merely acted as an individual, extending her hand to help others. Please do not mistake her actions as being otherwise. Really? As an individual, you say? Don't forget, we are all Fontanians here. This is the nation of justice, the nation of Hydro! Even if Miss Navia only voluntarily rendered her assistance, that doesn't change the fact that her beautiful soul must return to everyone. Water accepts all, blends with all. It will surely accept her kindness. Everything is measured here in the nation of Hydro, and in the end, everyone shall meld together. Thus, when a unanimous opinion emerges, that opinion represents justice. Now I speak for everyone. Our opinion is consistent. Navia should stay. We and Navia are one. And you would call this justice? Preposterous. You are merely jealous that Demoiselle still has a chance to exist as an individual. Have you forgotten how much you all once longed to become individuals? To become independent? Do you mean to defy our justice? If your justice is flawed, then why should we acknowledge it? As you said, we can also have our own justice. Silver and I shall defend Demoiselle. And that is how we will enforce justice. Ugh, my head... It hurts. Demoiselle. Silver, it hurts. My head is spinning. All I can see is stars swirling in front of me. I remember now. Everything that seemed odd from the very beginning. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen. And Mr. Giverny and Mrs. Burnett, who we met earlier. Even Malus and Silver. I don't want to admit it, but... But they're all dead. Don't be afraid. And don't admit guilt. We will protect you to the very end. Absurd! Who are you to say that she cannot be judged? We are the majority, and in the Nation of Trials, the majority is absolute justice. We are the will of all. Don't let them escape! We shall keep Navia here with us! Mr. Malus and Mr. Silver, must you be so stubborn? How could the two of you possibly hope to stand against the Collective? Do not resist. This judgment is fair and just. Navia belongs to us. After all that happened, she should not be left alone in Poisson. What are you saying? No more excuses. She says we're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> How could she possibly be an independent individual? What's with these people? Who's jealous of her? She belongs to us. Miss Navia, she... 
silence. Uh, that's... Uh, Monsieur Nervillette! Such commotion is prohibited in the court. The accusations you just presented are nonsense and cannot constitute a proper trial. The court will adjourn for the rest of the day. In this, I shall hear no objections from any unauthorized party. How are thanks, Monsieur Nervillette? Please leave with me, Miss Navia, while there is still time. But... Go on now, demoiselle. This is your only chance to leave this place. What, can't bear to leave us behind or something? Loose. <laughs> My apologies. I couldn't resist making one little joke once I realized that this shall be our last goodbye. Malus, Silver. Quickly, you must come now. Goodbye, Demoiselle. Farewell. Uh, no, wait! Just a second! Uh, Navia? <laughs> You're awake. Good. Uh, I must have been dreaming. Malus and Silver were still alive, and they were... They were defending me at some insane trial. It looks like you're all right. Did all the sad feelings cause you to have a nightmare? Paimon could give you a hug. The ruins you were exploring suffered a cave-in. When I arrived, I found you falling toward the water. You were just about to be dissolved within, but I... Hmm... Hmm? What is it? I think I saw two Oceanids protecting you. It was only for a moment, perhaps even a fraction of a second, but they gave me the chance to retrieve you. Were it not for their intervention, I would not have been able to rescue you before your consciousness dissipated. Wait, did you say Oceanids? You mean like what happened with Vache? Perhaps those two Oceanids were the people you saw in your dream. <sighs> I always told them that they didn't have to protect me. <sighs> to think that they'd keep doing so even after death. <sighs> Please come with me. Nevelet, are you okay? Hmm? Oh, I am quite all right. Perhaps there's something we could chat about? Why do you look so stiff all of a sudden? Oh, Paimon knows. You're the type who feels awkward when there's nothing to talk about, right? I merely thought that we should give Navia some time to herself. Huh? Why didn't you just say so then? Don't you think it's even more awkward to call us over like this and then have nothing to talk about? Hmm... I suppose so. Ah, Sijuin! I hope all is well with her these days. Her work in the Fortress of Meropede has not been too much for her, has it? No way! Don't worry! She's doing fine down there. She's an amazing head nurse. I see. Well, that is good. I have always worried that Sijuin would need a lot of time to understand the world of humanity, just as I have. Oh, and the Duke also says hi! Even though Sijuin made him do that, he hopes that you haven't been overwhelmed by all that's happened lately. Thank you. I have indeed been busy lately, and I also hope that everything is going well in the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, he still doesn't know what to talk about. Uh... Let's chat about something else, then. So, Nivellet, uh, you're probably quite the swimmer, huh? Mm hmm Yes, of course. Uh, this isn't going anywhere. Uh, let's try something else. Um, how did you find these ruins? Did the knave tell you? Yes, in fact. I had arranged to meet you in Poisson, but when I arrived, I discovered that the Fatui were helping the residents evacuate. 
They had even transported a large quantity of supplies to the area. Amid my astonishment, I ran into the nave, and we had a chat. She informed me that she had asked you to investigate the ancient ruins here. Yeah, we originally planned to meet up with you, but we thought you might still be busy with all those official documents. We didn't think exploring the ruins would take very long, and who would have thought you'd wrap things up so quickly? Looks like we've reached the end. This is the place. There should not be any other hidden spaces in the vicinity. The path sure had some twists and turns, but it turns out that this place isn't actually that big. Stone slates? It seems like they were put here as an offering. Uh, could we take them down and have a look? Uh, perhaps we should just leave them be for now. Hmm. There are four locations in total, but only three stone slates. The slate that should be in the first empty spot is missing. And the surrounding walls also show signs of damage. There's... Something written below. Let Paimon see. Uh, reason dictates that this nation be destroyed. I shall record the history of its future here in its past. Uh, say what? It feels like someone left these slates and these words here for a purpose. But does he mean that Fontaine should be destroyed? That would fit the circumstances dictated by the prophecy, yes. Indeed, the slate's contents correspond to it. Take the second slate, for example. There's a person kneeling here. She seems so dedicated. And there's a whole bunch of other people behind her doing the same. She's facing this... Uh... What is this? Some kind of island in the sky? And is that... Lady Farina in the third image? Did the Hydro Archon fall into the water? And is that a ring of people around her? Paimon doesn't quite get it. Are they all in the water? The fourth image. I know this one. This exactly matches the content of the prophecy. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain. Weeping on her throne. Hmm. More information should be hidden in these slates, but I fear I cannot easily uncover it, most likely due to us missing the first slate. I am very sorry. Don't blame yourself, Monsieur Nervalet. Deciphering ancient stone slates isn't one of your duties. Ooh, Paimon's getting the chills just looking at these slates. This says that it's the history of the future, right? That means the prophecy's sure to come true. <sighs> I really hope it doesn't mean that. Still... Paimon feels like these images are kind of weird when you look at them together. Huh. Hmm. That's right! If the images are in chronological order, shouldn't the fourth, the waters drowning Fontaine, come before the third, where the Hydro Archon herself falls into the water? And yet the order is reversed here. If we go by timing, Lady Farina only emerges in the third image. That means that the person in the second image might be the previous Hydro Archon. Egeria, then. I had never met her, but her appearance here does match the records. The previous Archon kneeling before the floating island in the skies. As if confessing a sin. Did she herself commit that sin? And 
If not, why would she be in such a posture? Also, I'm still wondering why these ancient stone slates are here at all. Judging from their contents, could this place be the origin of the prophecy? <laughs> Does that mean that someone, or some people, once saw these slates? But who would have created these slates and left these words here? Hmm. It seems that any further clues will have to come from Farina. In that case, there's no time to lose. There's nothing else to be gained here, so let's head back first. Yeah, we better get somewhere safe for now. Let's split up here. I'm going to check on what's happening with the Spina. You know how it is. There's some things you just need to be there for yourself. You still have energy for that, Navia? Paimon's already beat! <sighs> just head back to the Fluvsandra and have a rest then. Thanks for keeping me company all this time. I'll depart as well. Thanks for your hard work today. Rest well, everyone. Traveler, I will go talk to Farina tomorrow morning to ask about the stone slates. I'm sure that you're concerned about this matter as well. If you have time, drop by my office. I will share the results of our discussion with you. Are you really going to talk to her about this directly? Will that be a problem? Ugh, Paimon's getting a little scared now that it's come to this. She has long been harboring secrets, and will not give them up easily. Which makes it all the more my duty to ensure that she understands the present situation. Alright, we'll leave it in your hands then. You're probably the best person to talk to her anyway. I will be carefully considering my words tonight. Traveler, Paimon, our safe house at the Fluvsandra is always open to you as ever. So please don't think you're an imposition. All right. I'll be on my way then. Ah, we're finally back! Welcome back. We've got a special menu prepared for you two tonight. Mona? Seriously, nobody just uses a scry glass whenever they've got time to just see who they'll meet on the road. Still, we didn't expect to see you here. Uh, wait, you're not a Fontanian, are you, Mona? Well, I have some business to attend to here, so I booked a hotel in the city. I was just out for a stroll when I bumped into you. Quite unexpectedly, if I might add. Why did you think I was from Fontaine, though? Is that because Magistus doesn't sound much like a Mondstadter surname? Well, I used to have my own surname, which was, well, some other thing. Either way, the old hag told me when she took me as her disciple that the first step to being a great astrologist's pupil was to change that name. There was nothing for it, really. She really is amazing at astrology, so I changed my name to what it is now according to her wishes. To my surprise, however, Magistus is not the name of some ancient house or clan. Uh, it isn't? Nope. Although it is used by us in place of surnames, it generally just means great. Wow! Imagine including a boast in your name. Wait, 
Hey, are you gonna have to put that into your genealogy as well? I reckon so. In any case, I'd give my disciple a name like this as well, if I were to take one. Astromancer Barbaloth Trismegistus. Whoa, that's a long one. Does it also mean great or something? My name means Mona the Great Astrologist. As for the old hag, hers is, in plain speech, the thrice as great scholar of the stars. Just take it as a title specific to astrologists. Thrice as great? That's so... petty. I know, right? <sighs> That's just how she is. She used to call herself Magistus, actually, but once she took me in, she changed her name to Trismagistus. Talk about excessive. Magistus is thus the calling card of our school, so to speak, which makes it about the same as a surname. It's all right if you don't get it. You can look into it further should you need to study astrology more deeply. That sounds terrible! Ugh. But anyway, you're not Fontanian, are you, Mona? You're from Mondstadt, right? Well, I was born in Mondstadt, yes. My parents migrated to Dorman Port, and I traveled with the old hag for a while, after which I settled down in Mondstadt City. Oh, that's a good thing then. At least we know you won't be dissolved by Fontaine's waters. Hmm, speaking of that, I'm sure you're aware that a bunch of things have happened here in Fontaine, right? I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. That was the main reason, yes. Just a while back, the Steambird invited me to take part in a panel and speak about the circulation of the prophecy as an astrologist. The invitation was sent quite early on. I don't think anyone expected Fontaine to be in this much trouble. What do you make of that prophecy, Mona? Just tell us what you think as an astrologist. Your word would go a long way to make things more certain and less... scary. What I can tell you is that I'm an astrologist. And that this prophecy concerns the fate of Fontaine. Even that of Altevat. Ascertaining this is akin to reading the fortune of the whole world. I'm afraid that this is not something that just anyone can do. If I could do it, you would no longer call me an astrologist, but a visionary. But on the flip side, the prophecy is so huge and powerful that it must surely come from a powerful visionary. Its contents involve the fate of the world. Disregarding it would be a mistake. A visionary? Sounds really powerful and all, but does such a person really exist? Of course. The old hag could do it. And I bet there are others amongst those Hex and Zirkle colleagues of hers who could do something similar. Uh, are you sure? Hmm... Alright, I'll help you. It isn't often that I see you with such a serious look on your face. I'll tell you once I hear back from her. Thanks, Mona! You're amazing as always! Oh, well, this is something only I can do after all. So yes, your praises are quite welcome. That's the greatest of astrologists for you! Of all the people we know, you know the stars the best! Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's the spirit. Oh, sorry. I came to see what all the commotion was about. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to inform the Spina di Rosula. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Guess we were getting a little too carried away there. Well, I'll go tinge my own business now. If I receive any news, I'll be sure to come find you two again. And there she goes, quick as rushing water. And here we are with the Spina guy giving us suspicious looks. <sighs> if Paimon hadn't spoken for you, it'd be you getting all the weird looks! Huh, the things Paimon does for you! Hmm, <laughs> that's more like it. I'm still feeling kind of sleepy. 
<sighs> but it's time to get up, Traveler. We agreed to go see Nivellet, so let's pack it up and get going. You're here! Finally! Uh, is something wrong? Monsieur Nervalette and Lady Farina, they, they seem to have gotten into a dispute. Please go see for yourself. Like I said, I've already explained everything. And yet the problem has not been properly solved. There is little space for excuses between us. It is not my intention to offend you, but please, tell me where you stand. You are the Hydro Archon Fossilor, are you not? Look at this. This is a list of the victims from the recent Poisson incident. <laughs> I, you mean... they're all... We did not arrive in time to avert this disaster, and I will not have it happen again. <sighs> I will say this once more. You must tell me everything you know. Yesterday, I found three stone slates in some ancient ruins near Poisson. Do you know anything about those? Seriously? You're questioning me like this is a court case now. I don't know anything about that. But you found them in some ancient ruins, you say? That's correct, which is why I came to ask you some questions. There should have been four slates, but one of them was missing. The other three feature different images that seem to correlate to the prophecy. <laughs> the prophecy? The second of these slates depicts the previous Hydro Archon Egeria kneeling before a floating island in the sky, as if confessing something. Do you know nothing of this either? I don't! I've never seen such slates! I'll ask you again. Do you really have no information regarding the previous Archon? My deciphering of the slates indicates that the Hydro Archon Egeria once had to confess to, or apologize for, a certain sin. If anyone would know about it, it should be you. All gods don't have the same secrets, you know. She was herself and I'm me. Is it really so strange that I know nothing? I understand your concerns, but... I'm sorry. I just don't have anything to tell you. <sighs> Forgive me for saying this now, Lady Farina, but I have long known of your various secret investigations into certain matters. There are several indications that you have been investigating the prophecy on the sly. This is not strange in itself, considering that you are the Hydro Archon. But it is strange that you should also claim to not know any of Egeria's secrets, as well as do nothing following your inquiries. You have never been as superficial as you have presented yourself to be, nor are you a fool. And yet, your behavior is very inconsistent. You've been watching me all this time, have you? I didn't think you were that type. <laughs> you... Well, since you know about my secret investigations, then you should know I'm actually working to take care of it. There's no point questioning or suspecting me. You're the Eudix, but you're still my subordinate. You should be following my lead. Just trust in me, your Archon, and do as I say. Never mind whether you can truly convince yourself to or not, it'll all turn out fine. That's all I have to say. We do not discuss this matter again. Oh, <laughs> the opera's about to start. Toodles! <sighs> Did Farina not notice us standing by the door? Wonder what's up with her. She was smiling. Huh. She didn't seem in the mood to care if we were listening in or not.
I assume you've been outside for a while now? Oh! You noticed! Seems Farina didn't even realize we were here. She was in a great panic, though I cannot discern the reason. Our discussion reached impasses time and again, a state of affairs that we cannot allow to continue. Still, I do not understand. Dialogue is the basis for understanding, so why did she keep refusing to engage? Everyone in her inner circle has noticed that she is hiding some secret. The issue is her attitude. I fear that she will not reveal anything unless absolutely forced to. We may have to create a situation in which she will have no choice but to speak. Oh? Like what? Normally, people will only reveal the truth when standing trial. Perhaps we must have the Hydro Archon experience just such a scenario. But Farina's seen so many trials and she's really good at dodging questions. How do we make sure that she won't just slip away at the first chance she gets? We will need to consider this thoroughly, join forces with various parties, and then do what we can. <sighs> if at all possible, I would prefer to recuse myself from this affair, but... We must prevent the prophecy from coming to pass. This may be cruel to her, but all Fontaine is in crisis. The information a god possesses is too precious, and so we must take a chance on this. Hmm, but who will lend us their aid to do such a thing? Well, that's everyone, huh? Speaking of which, it was pretty smart of you to think of hiding here. Poisson was just involved in a disaster, so it's presently devoid of people. That naturally makes it the best choice. And here you are, drinking tea like it's the most natural thing in the world, huh? That's what family should do. Sit and enjoy a leisurely time together. <laughs> it's nice to enjoy tea here, you know. Care for a cup? Ahem. Lend me your ears, everyone. Hmm. Or perhaps one of you might like to start us off. How about you, friend? Uh, me? No, I don't think I can. Hmm. Uh, then, how about you, good sir? I fear that I will cause the mood on this boat to become as somber as it is in court. <laughs> Well then, I guess we're lucky we've got a local like me to organize things. Wonderful, the spotlight at last. I guess I'll be facilitating things from here. That was a little long-winded, don't you think? Oh, <laughs> you might be right. Anyway, to cut to the chase, our friend here, the Traveler, has brought us together to discuss something. As for what that is, well... Uh, let's start by saying that we'll be pooling our efforts together to create a series of traps. Oh, how intriguing. Well, it's just an expression, really. One that I just learned from Chlorand, and used on the spot. So, let's invite her to explain in detail. A round of applause, please. Huh? Didn't you say that you would be facilitating this? Oh, come now. Your work doesn't involve much public speaking, right? This is a good chance to practice. You might even pick up some fancy oratory tricks to impress your boss with in the future. <laughs> I see. And what does my boss say? <laughs> he is glad that you consider him your boss. Do go on. In that case, <clears throat> do any of you have experience hunting? Not that I recall. Fremenet and I once used a wooden stick in a basket to catch wild rabbits when we were younger. As for Lynette, um... Oh, right. You were sick that day, weren't you? Uh, I've also gone diving to catch some fish before. Does that count? Uh, I'm afraid not. You may or may not have heard. 
but Fontaine once played host to a group known as the Marachaussee Hunters. Though that was their name, they did not hunt animals, but rather various monsters left behind by the ancient dynasty of King Remus. Today, Fontaine's monster population has already thinned greatly, so the Hunters have blended back into society, taking up arms in other lines of work. They even left a unique methodology of hunting in their wake. A trap comprises of the following components, bait, a trigger, and a containment device. Sometimes a lethal implement will also be necessary to deal with the prey. So, if we were to build a trap together, right now, what would you choose to build it with? For me, I would prefer something basket-shaped. Pigeons and rabbits will see the bait and naturally enter the snare. Our line of work requires a deft hand, and we're some of the best in the industry, so you can count on our techniques. You used some of those techniques while moving the people of Poisson, didn't you? My subordinates mentioned that you even performed some magic for the bawling children. Yes, and I even managed to gather some intelligence in the meantime. I'm quite the multitasker if I do say so myself. I'm afraid I can't claim that as my strong suit. I prefer more stable methods, like placing bait in the water and waiting for the fish to come within reach. That's the kind of method I would count on. <laughs> Calm and steady. Exactly the kind of person who would catch loads of fish. And I can be their assistant. With discretion, I'm sure. Hmm. I'd probably use some sort of mechanical animal. Papa once bought me some small clockwork squirrels, mice, and such. When placed in the forest, they can attract others of their kind. I remember that you liked those too, didn't you? I did. And that would be a good way to go about it. If they're realistic enough, animals of the same kind will follow them all the way to the trap. What about you, Monsieur Nevelet? I fear I do not have any related experience. Hmm. That makes sense. You usually solve problems directly, without the use of any such tricks. But I do have one more question for you, monsieur. If we were to create a trap now, how would you design it? Hmm. I would like for it to be effective, but bring no harm to the prey. A more gentle trap would be ideal. Hmm. Kind, as always. However, our intention doesn't necessarily change the containment device and the type of implement we need. If we wanted to kill the prey in one strike, we would need a powerful implement. However, that also goes for prey that must be captured and safely contained. Wait, why is that? Only a hunter who's a true expert at subduing their prey can snare it without harming it. The line that divides life and death is often exceedingly thin. Uh, so are we going hunting together? Huh. We haven't thought of seeing ourselves as hunters. It kinda works, but maybe it's still not the best metaphor. If our means of capturing and dealing with our prey is to put them on trial, then the hunting metaphor is actually quite accurate. But we shall require much more courage than any hunter to judge a god, a being whose seat is an exalted throne. Oh, so that's what's going on. Sounds very interesting. But everyone seemed pretty fired up, huh? Paimon thought they'd be at least a little frightened. Well, Fremine was, now that Paimon thinks about it, but everyone else just looked a little surprised. Uh, well... It's hard to say. Paimon doesn't have any experience with this sort of thing. But with you around, Paimon sure will do great! After all, you're the most reliable person in the world, aren't you? <laughs> uh, huh? Uh, did you just pour some 
Pinky? Pyra didn't notice you doing that at all! Uh, then what's that? Pyra's never seen that cup before! Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. Have you forgotten me already? Wait, you are familiar. You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru. <laughs> the voice from the sky, hmm? I fear that description is wrong. Though, not completely wrong. <sighs> You're feeling lost now, just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Hmm. Consider me a passerby. Just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. What? Th then is there any way we can stop it? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tevat so easily be changed? Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners, where the god's gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? Well, what is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but... It also sounds kind of scary. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant, but others you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm, this was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice... It's gone! I've walked in on some lively banter. Mona! Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more... interesting than I expected. Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Did she have pink hair by any chance? Why, yes! It was Charlotte! You remember her, right? That daredevil journalist! I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but... How can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once! Ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Huh? Goodness gracious! Are you serious? She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. Pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? 
The Hexen Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. As for the mage named N, the old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd be... <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and N's been around for longer than that. Whoa. The Hexen Circle sounds like a scary group. But they must really stay in shape to live so long. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Yes, she was quite cryptic, but I suspect she means that there is still a way to turn things around. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. Traveler? Paimon? Are you two alright? Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? I see. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for, and believe in, miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational, but fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? Huh. You do have a point. <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff... I oh! I need to get going! It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. I suppose that might be why we always seem to meet by coincidence. Paimon feels kind of moved by what Mona said. But also kinda sad, too. Hey, Traveler! Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go! Uh... Huh? Our names are written in this newspaper. Uh, what's going on? Let Paimon see! The underwater stronghold, the Fortress of Meripede, has continued in its noble autonomy. But that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. Thus, did an Outlander friend become the focus of this report? A blinded French ruler with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. It is said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the Traveler contain surprises in spades. Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet, The Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh. Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her! She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? Ugh, seriously? Well, fine. Those headlines and photos do look cool, so Paimon will forgive her this time. We're here! <sighs> Paimon's hungry. Should we go in and get something to eat?
situation we were in, let's give it another go, but I'm sure it'll be great! One slice of cake, please. Ah, someone showed up after all! Oh, wait, you're the one from the Palais Mermonia. Oh, are you here to buy cake too? <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. Wait, did he really say something like that? That's right. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. Do you come here often? Usually every day. Every day? It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. Uh. Then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon and you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore? What would you think? But why would it close? Well, Paimon doesn't know either, but maybe... Maybe the waters will rise tomorrow. You know, like in the prophecy. Oh, the prophecy. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, I haven't paid much attention to that. No, uh, still, even if there'd be no more cake tomorrow, that wouldn't keep me from having some today. No, no, it's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. Huh. Don't be sad. Excuse me, could I have two more slices of cake to go? These two slices are for you. Sijuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad. Oh, you know Sijuin? I sure do. Mm -hmm. She was born before me and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans. She said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily, yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. I've got something else to do, so I'll be going now. You two try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? <laughs> Bye! And there she goes! All right, let's dig in. I'm unsure this cake will be delicious. It's more delicious than last time! And the flavor gets even better with a sip of tea! It sure would be nice if we could come again tomorrow! Sure would be nice if we could always eat delicious food here. Wow! If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon! Oh, have you seen the article I wrote about you? Ha! You've got some nerve! You just used us to make some quick mora! Oh, you needn't worry about that. I heard that you were in Poisson some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. It's all right, though. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. Really? Oh, you're the best! <laughs> you're almost a little too easy to win over, Paimon. If I were a journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. Oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. Still, what brings you here all of a sudden? Were you looking for me? When Mona mentioned you, we thought of coming to see you at work. <laughs> I see. It seems you've already bumped into Mona here in Fontaine. So she mentioned me? What did she say? She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. <laughs> nice. In which case, can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary Traveler and Paimon? Huh? So your article in the paper today doesn't count? Oh, of course it doesn't. That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. Yeah, are we even qualified? Why not? If I say you're worth an interview, then you're worth it. But not right now, of course. I'll need a few days to prepare. Oh, in that case, we'll just chat when you have the time then? Oh, so that's a yes? Oost! 
splendid! I'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately. I'll have to apply for lighting, a venue, some props, and... <laughs> Whew! So much to get done now. Talk to you later! Wait, Charlotte! Paimon's still got a question for you! Hmm? And what's that? If... Just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow? What would you do today? Huh, that's the prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but I've never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. Oh, but I'm still a journalist first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene. And secondly, I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. From what I've seen, most people don't know what they do should the worst come to pass. In truth, it might be better just to behave like normal rather than worry over such an end. So in all likelihood, I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. That sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. And then do you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. I'm not a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic, but I do love my job, and I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist. But anyway, that's my answer. And on that note, I'll get back to my preparations. That's so nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kind of envies her. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the sea, shall we? The sea breeze and scenery can be a pretty soothing combo, huh? Hmm. Paimon's been thinking. If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow, where would we go and what would we do? No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? We've always been moving to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either, with us always being on the road and whatnot. You mean... still traveling? Huh. Wait, isn't that what we've always been doing? Like you'll grow mold if you stay here long enough. But it's still better than the Fortress of Meripede, that's for sure. It's not only damp there, but salty too. Ah, oh, so the two of you are still here. Wonderful. Oh, you're from the Palais Marmonia, aren't you? Yes, I'm Isadora. Monsieur Nervillat sent me to look for you two before. I heard that afterward you went to the fortress of Meropede. <laughs> Not at all. I'm well aware that you're friends of his. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. Yes, inside the Opera House. The Mari Chaussée Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. A riot? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House, and while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her, loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. And before she could respond, others started to join in. 
the crowd continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break out. So people have started to put the blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. So what happened after that? Is Farina okay? Seeing that the situation was spiraling out of control and that further argument was pointless, she claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marichose Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. So, you mean she's still missing? That's right. The Marichose has dispatched many people to search for her. But we don't have any leads yet. That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god, after all. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? Good. Monsieur Nervillet sent me to tell you about the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Don't worry. This is more than enough to go on. Thanks for keeping us informed. Ah, oh, is that so? Well, all right then. In that case, you two take care. I'll be heading back to the palais now. Well, sounds like we should hurry over to Poisson then. If we know Farina, she won't try to fix things in this situation. Instead, she'll look for a place to wait out the heat. And, as we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. When Nervale was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. It would be hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Paimon thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. Huh! Well, what do you think? Paimon knows the answer, of course, but Paimon can do the analysis to back it up, too. Cool, huh? In that case, there's not a moment to lose! Poisson, here we come! Farina, right over there! She really is here all on her own. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Should I just give up? This is all meaningless. What was meant to happen did happen after all. Everyone's dead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Give up, Farina. There's no point in holding out. <laughs> I'm sorry. But what can I even do other than to repeat meaningless apologies over and over? <laughs> Who, who's that? Don't worry, Farina. It's just us. <clears throat> <laughs> so, it is you, blonde traveler from another land. Why, I almost thought you were summoned from that mob of my ignorant subjects. Come to kneel and beg for my forgiveness. Farina, you were crying just now, weren't you? The tear stains on your face are obvious. Uh, what do you mean, tear stains? Uh, oh, <laughs> I remember. The show at the Opera House earlier this morning was so moving, I'm still trying to process it. <laughs> Who did that uncivilized rabble think they were, disturbing my enjoyment of the arts? They even dare to tout their Archon! I must teach them a lesson. <laughs> I can just imagine their twisted and frustrated faces once they realize that I'm nowhere to be found. 
Oh, and I'm sure Nouvellet and those people from the Marsh to say Phantom are freaking out right next to them, too. <laughs> I... Uh, of course not! Hey, there she is! The Hydro Archon's over there! Quick, after her! Uh, Farina, those people seem to be after you! Uh, they are? <laughs> they are just some rabid fans who want to cut the line because they haven't been able to meet me in person, aren't they? Mm, that's against the rules. I can't let them get their way. Uh, Farina just ran off! Quick, we have to catch up with her! Should be the place, right? Hey, Farina! There's a good hiding spot over here! Quick, come to Paimon before the rest of them catch up to you! Uh, wh what? What is this place? Hurry, they're almost here! Fine, fine, I suppose haste is warranted. Lead the way. <laughs> I totally thought they had caught me. Uh, no, I mean, I merely gave in to the sheer enthusiasm they displayed. <laughs> uh, you're right. Yep, that's a good girl. Uh, what's happening? The ground's shaking. Is it an earthquake? Yeah, a quake of this kind preceded the flooding in Poisson, didn't it? It can't be. It's happening again. Well, there's no need to worry too much about that. Nouvellet's made some emergency plans, so the evacuation should go a lot smoother this time. Yeah, I hope you're right. But the people of Poisson, they've already... It's true. I've been investigating the prophecy for hundreds of years. I once had informants all over to Vat, searching for clues and feeding information back to me. I've tried all kinds of ways too to hold back the sea, anything to keep the coastline from advancing. But all my efforts proved to be futile in the end. Really, the truth has been clear to me for a very long time. We cannot make an enemy of the Divine. No matter what we do, the will of the Heavenly Principles will have its way, and the prophecy shall be fulfilled. <laughs> Give up. <sighs> I do love the sound of that phrase. It would mean finally coming to terms with fate, but also for me to finally be free. Indeed. I've thought about giving up so many times, especially after we almost lost Poisson. Fate is really unreasonable, isn't it? It has no heart and obeys no rules. The prophecy has only just started to come true, and so many people have already lost their lives. But just now, it all became clear to me. I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. As long as the final moment hasn't come, it's still not too late. 
Don't worry. I... I will keep hope alive for everyone until the very end. <sighs> well, that's enough for now. I got the impulse to play the stricken maiden, but honestly, considering my rank and station, that wasn't a good fit at all. <laughs> Don't take any of what I just said seriously. How could I possibly let Fontaine fall to the whims of trivial prophecy? Come on! Paimon could have sworn you were actually being honest just now. Share. My burden. <sighs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. A witness. <sighs> yes, I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... <sighs> I... Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my opening performance. Now, without further ado, we may proceed to the trial of our god. Ah, so this is what it is. Yes, you deserve praise for the effort you took to raise the dramatic stakes. Do not forget, however, that I am Fosalor, the god of justice, the embodiment of justice itself. Does it not strike you as even the least bit absurd to bring the very concept of justice to trial? May I interpret these words as your refusal to stand trial? In that case, you will have the opportunity to defend your honor through a duel. You... you would draw your blade against a god? Ahem, <clears throat> I see. It seems like you have made up your mind. Paimon can't believe it! She... she just surrendered! Hmm... What the heck is going on? Did I just see an Archon surrender to a... a human? Wow, how utterly humiliating. Lady Farina, what is the meaning of this? Uh, it would seem that there has been a misunderstanding. To be clear, the raising of both hands is not always an indication of surrender. Looking for excuses again, huh? I raised my hands just now to indicate my acceptance of the trial. No duel shall be necessary. I will admit that I've been running away for a long time. I'm sorry, everyone. I was unable to protect the people of Poisson. It is my duty to stand trial for my crimes. You are not the only ones to be disappointed in me. I too am exceedingly disappointed in myself. <sighs> but now, it is time for the Hydro Archon to show you her courage and resolve! I, Farina, 
We'll use this trial to show the world the true meaning of justice! This time, I will protect you. Applaud and rejoice! One of the most outrageous and fantastical arcs known to the opera Epicles is now unfolding before your eyes. Mark my words, this shall be one of the most exhilarating and brilliant shows ever to grace the stage of Fontaine! The trial of the Hydro Archon, Fossilor, will now begin! Woohoo! We're making history! <sighs> Why does it feel like Farina just took over the whole thing? Like, come on! Didn't she just get forced to stand trial for her crimes? Also, even though she's still acting super dramatic, she is taking this seriously this time, right? Alright then. Who will be my opponent in this trial? The court asks the prosecutor to please take the stand. That so. Very well. Then please speak, witness of Tivat, my accuser and fated opponent. So, please allow me to ask, as a final question before the trial begins. Just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? Well, we did do a lot of prep after the meeting that day. I can go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula, since they were rather straightforward and easy. Navia, the president of the Spina di Rosula. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. They changed into plain clothes and came to the Opera House as regular audience members, waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and more of the prophecy is fulfilled. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you, when something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. So, we arranged for a second group to lie in wait there. So, you mean... The ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina? And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box so you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. That's right. That house was a magic box, rather than someone's residence. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles, the volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude, and the distance it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson and Arrhenius. Its cargo, of course, was an Archon instead of a human. My thanks, Farina. Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Uh, you're welcome? Of course, this performance was only made possible with Father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. We had to select a location, construct the giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and open up a path through the water. It was a lot of work for all of us. So, in other words... The earthquake that we felt within the giant magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? That's right. It wasn't a sign of another disaster to come. <laughs> then, I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. You gathered a crowd, prepared a stage, and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Also that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? Yes, that is correct.
Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Thank you. As for you, Traveler, I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. Oh? <laughs> Is that so? Then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <laughs> It's fine. It matters not. What's done is done. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. Sir Prosecutor, please allow me to pass this along. This is a document that Miss Charlotte applied for and received permission to share with you during the trial. According to her, it should speed up the proceedings. Huh? Charlotte wanted to give us something? Oh, so she's here too! Hey, Charlotte! Oh, let Paimon see! Uh, isn't this the exclusive interview that she did with us before? So she's already finished it, huh? Oh, wait! Then that means this document is a perfect timeline of everything that's happened ever since we stepped foot in Fontaine! So in other words, we can refer to this anthology of evidence every time we want to use something from our journey as evidence for an argument! Let's quickly confirm the information in it. Just think of it as a refresher, alright? You defeated the Hydro Archon in the very first duel you took part in at the Opera House! That's one for the history books, all right. You defeated the hi I didn't think that you'd wind up getting to the bottom of the case i had been following all this time. I guess you could also see this as a happy coincidence. This is the first time Monsieur Nervillette had a difference of opinion with the oratories. Even the Hydro Archon can't figure it out. A Fatui Harbinger. She's an extraordinary person. Her instinct must mean something. The fortress of Meripede was almost destroyed in a single day! That I didn't witness that scene personally will always be a source of professional regret, I think. According to Monsieur Nouvellet, both Child and that whale should have been in the primordial sea at that time. I nearly lost my awesome friend Navia. To be honest, that still gives me shivers. The words of someone as extraordinary as a witch can probably only be truly understood when something surreal happens to you. The prosecution and the defense are both in position. The trial shall now begin. <laughs> oh, come on, Nervilet. There's no need to repeat all the unimportant legalese. Just fast forward to the part where the prosecution lays out my offenses. As the defendant and the lead actress of this performance, I still haven't even been informed of my supposed guilt in all of this. Of course, it is only natural for humans to struggle to understand the actions of a god. However, you will need more than that to convict me of a crime. That's true, but my charge here is unrelated to your conduct as an Archon. Instead, I would like to charge you as a fraud who's never been the Archon in the first place. Wait, what was that? Lady Farina's a fraud? Hey, I came here thinking that we were going to try the Hydro Archon for forsaking her duty, but did I hear that right? She's not our Archon at all? Charge accepted. Lady Farina, do you plead guilty to the charge? <laughs> Lady Farina. I plead not guilty. How can I be guilty? There is no way that I, 
Fusilor, otherwise known as Farina de Fontaine, a member of the Seven and the Regina of all waters, kindreds, peoples, and laws of Fontaine, could be anything other than your true Archon. Yeah, even though Lady Farina can be rather eccentric, isn't it going too far to doubt her very identity? Yeah, I've never questioned her identity either. Sure, Lady Farina can be super irresponsible, but, but what grounds does that prosecutor have to make such a huge claim? I have cause to believe that common sense will prevail in this case. Many of the members of the audience have known me as the Hydro Archon ever since they were born. There would be no fooling their memory. See? <laughs> The Oratrice has decided to show me its favor! Are you sure you want to commit to a charge that will never be upheld? If you wish to drop the case, I can promise you as the God of Justice that you will not have to face trial for making a false accusation. We will treat everything that's happened as a dramatic spectacle and move on with our lives. What do you say to that? Huh. An argument with near impossible odds, huh? We have to not only refute Farina's claims, but also overturn the long-held beliefs of the people. Well, I tried to give you the chance to surrender. If you must persist, then let me ask. If you believe I'm not the Archon, then what manner of being do you think I am? And if I was not the Archon, then how did I manage to live for over 500 years? First of all, you may be a member of another long-lived race, which would allow you to naturally possess an extended lifespan. And second of all, even if that wasn't the case, there could be other ways to extend your life. <laughs> Who gave you that idea? Was it the knave? You'd sink so low as to use a harbinger's words against me. A curse. I once thought it possible that the aura of an Archon might naturally resemble a type of curse. But in light of this claim, perhaps what I sensed was not your divinity, but a curse after all. You sensed it too, huh, Nervalette? Lady Farina is actually a human? Well, it is true that it's extremely difficult to tell humans and gods apart just by looking at them. It's not impossible. Well, don't start celebrating too early now. Even if I have been carrying a curse like you said, how does that prove that I am merely a human being? Besides, everyone knows that the main difference between a human and a god is the possession of authority. Gods can do what humans cannot. That's why they're worshipped as gods. For centuries, manifestations of my authority have served the nation of Fontaine. One need only to turn their eyes towards the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal in this very opera house, or consider the endemidium that is used in every aspect of life. You tried to reference the Oratrice. But weren't you as confused as all the rest of us when the Oratrice declared Child to be guilty without any proof? Otherwise, you should have come up with a good explanation for that by now. Didn't I make myself clear at the time? The decisions of the gods are naturally difficult for humans to comprehend. There is no need to provide an explanation. Lady Farina, I believe a reminder of your current circumstances is in order. While the court is in session, the principles of justice and the law must come before all else. While you are an Archon, you are also first and foremost the defendant in this trial. 
You will prove yourself unable to defend against the prosecution's charges if you continue to withhold vital information against the rules of the court. I never thought you'd use that kind of rhetoric against me. That was no trick of rhetoric, Lady Farina. I've merely reiterated the rules of the court. Rules that all should respect and follow. <laughs> so, you neither knew why Child was declared guilty, nor did you understand the structure and operations of the Oratrice. Instead of having been created by you, the manifestations of authority you mentioned have been made by the real Hydro Archon, haven't they? The real Hydro Archon? Well, now you're really losing me. It is true that I did not know why the Oratrice gave out a guilty verdict that day. But the Oratrice handed out that verdict unilaterally, and it has been operating independently ever since it was first created. You can't... you can't argue that just because a divine creation is flawed, that the god behind it must also be no god at all. <sighs> she's still throwing out all kinds of excuses. Seems like she's confident that we won't be able to produce proof that she has no power over the Oratrice. My power as an Archon. There are many ordinary citizens in the audience. How can I just carelessly demonstrate the formidable power of an Archon? If that poses a concern, I'm prepared to extend my protection to the audience. Um, you don't need to go that far. I... Uh... Aren't you the Hydro Archon? Or is it that you can't even wield the power of Hydro, much less the authority of a god? Indemnidium! Yes! It's all because of Indemnidium! All Archons derive their power from the faith of the people, and I've converted the people's faith in justice into Indemnidium! Thus did I give up all of my divine power to provide everyone with energy for their daily lives. Have you ever seen a more magnanimous god? Isn't that a huge stretch? Yeah, no matter how generous an Archon can be, how could they give up all their power? Can a god with no power even still be called a god? It seems like nobody's buying Farina's excuse. Hey, come now, everyone. Please don't stare at me as if I was a liar. I'm still the same Farina you knew, right? The one that you loved. <laughs> Shouldn't you want to believe in me? Please? You've got to believe me. If what the prosecutor said is true, she really has committed a grave offense. Did she deceive all of us? And all of our parents and grandparents too? And then all of our ancestors? Ever since they were born? Enough! That's enough! Tell me then, if I'm not the real Hydro Archon, then who is? If you have no evidence of another Hydro Archon's existence, nor can you find anyone who can back up their claim to be such, then what grounds have you to say that I'm not actually the real deal? Wow, she came up with yet another argument! Ugh, how can we refute her now? Seems like she really doesn't want to give up. Doesn't sound right. Paimon doesn't think. It has been established that all Fontanians can dissolve in water from the primordial sea. And that means. Since you insist on claiming to be a god and not a human, then there's a method that you can use right here and now to eliminate all suspicions of you being the latter. Miss Navia, please apply to serve as a temporary attorney for the prosecution before addressing the court. 
Though you act in partnership with the prosecutor, you must still adhere to proper procedure. Uh, uh, super sorry, Monsieur Chief Justice. I swear this really will be the last time that I'll speak out of turn. Now, I've brought some seawater from Poisson. As everyone knows, a massive flood struck the area not long ago, taking many lives, including those of some of my closest friends. So, Miss Farina, would you dare to touch some of the seawater? If we are to believe that you are indeed the real Hydro Archon, touching the seawater would have no effect on you. All it should do is strengthen your case. But, if you don't dare to touch it, then we would have basically proved the reverse. Oh, and I must remind you that after the disaster at Poisson, nobody wants to see any more people dissolve. I do hope you'll act prudently and choose the simpler path of admitting guilt. Navia from the Spina di Rasula. The Spina has governed Poisson for many years. I guess her suggestion is valid. If Lady Farina is indeed just a human, she's probably Fontanian like all the rest of us. Would she really dare to try? <sighs> Lady Farina, this test has been unilaterally proposed by the prosecution. As it falls outside the realm of standard court proceedings, you possess the right to decline participation. Well, of course he had to tell her that. But refusing to participate is basically the same as a confession of guilt. She's just staring at the water without saying a single word. It really does seem like she's quite terrified of it. That could only mean... What's going on? Is she really planning to... Uh, that's not what we thought she would... <sighs> Due to the inherent risk of the test, Lady Farina, you may... <clears throat> what? Hey! <sighs> I... I'm fine! Look! Look at me, everyone! My hand is still here! I haven't been dissolved! Will you believe me now? I really am your Archon! I'm nothing like a normal human who would fall apart as soon as they touch this water! Really, was this not the most obvious thing in the world? Miss Siegewing? If you're present, Miss Siegewing, please come forward and attend to the defendant. Siegewing? Don't be nervous. It'll just take a few seconds. Hmm, let me see... That should be enough. Please announce the results of your evaluation to the court, Miss Siegewing. As everyone doubtlessly saw, Miss Farina was displaying symptoms of hyperventilation and flushed skin. These indicate that she was experiencing the adverse effects of exposure to primordial seawater. The extent to which she was affected is the same as other humans when exposed to primordial seawater of a similar concentration. Thank you, Miss Siegewing. Lady Farina, you may return to the defendant's stand. Oh, wait. What did she just say? I didn't get dissolved. Shouldn't that be enough to prove my innocence? Well, considering your tendency to run from your problems, we did originally prepare a direct sample of the seawater around Poisson. However, after extensive discussion, we exchanged it for a sample that is not concentrated enough to dissolve an actual human. After all, on the off chance that something entirely unexpected might occur, we don't want anyone else to lose their life to the sea. Yeah, so out of regard for Farina's life, you secured a low concentration sample and asked the head nurse to serve as an expert witness. It's a great thing that the direct sample wasn't actually used. Farina could have... I... I can't believe... You... Listen to me! Listen 
it to me, everyone! Please don't give me such cold and disdainful looks! What happened just now didn't prove a single thing! Think about it! How can you conclusively prove that an Archon can't also be affected by the primordial seawater? Also, also, if I was really just a human, why would I dare to just put my hand in that kind of water? <laughs> Just listen to me! I swear, I really am your Archon! <sighs> I don't think anything she says at this point will sway anyone. The odds are just too stacked against her now. With all the things that have been said, Paimon doesn't think there's any way left for Farina to win. I believe the time for arguments and presentation of evidence has come to an end. If there are no objections, we will move on to the final judgment. <sighs> I don't think anything she says at this point will sway her to just be stacked against her now. In my capacity as Chief Justice, I shall now render judgment on Farina's misrepresentation of herself as the Archon of Fontaine. As a human who knowingly deceived her fellow citizens, Farina is... Guilty. We shall now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Farina is... No, the Oratrice also displays a guilty verdict. Isn't that correct, then? However, the exact wording of the verdict is thus. The Hydro Archon, guilty to be punished via the death sentence. Uh, the... the death sentence? That's actually one of the available sentences? I've always thought that it was just a myth. The one and only time the death sentence has been handed out at the court, and it's been given to the very person we've worshipped as the god of justice? What an unexpected twist. Farina's been sentenced to death by the Oratrice? We just wanted to use the trial to show her the seriousness of things so she'd tell us the truth. How did things escalate this quickly? This outcome is indeed quite strange. According to Fontaine's current definitions of justice, as well as its recommendations for criminal sentences, is this sentence really appropriate for the crimes that have been committed? Yeah! Even Fauché wasn't sentenced to death by the Oratrice! You know, the real evil mastermind behind the serial disappearances case! Indeed. Not only is Farina's sentence overly excessive, the very point of our trial today was also to prove that Farina has never been the Hydro Archon in the first place. But now, the Oratrice seems to have deliberately invoked the title of the Hydro Archon. What does this mean? Um, excuse me, if I may interrupt. Is... The trial's still going? Fremine! Oh, you finally made it! I assume this means you've completed your mission? Mm-hmm. Any mission Father assigns to me will always be top priority. Is... that the first prophecy slate? Huh. So the Knave privately arranged for Fremine 
need to try and find the missing slate! I looked everywhere and finally found it at the bottom of the sea. It took me a long time to get around some dangerous stretches of water. But has the trial already concluded? Then... doesn't that mean I've come too late? Oh no... Father will be disappointed in me. Thank you for your hard work, Mr. Fremenet. Please allow me to review the record left on the slate. <sighs> Traveler, I believe that you have already seen the other existing slates. and would like you to come here and confirm their contents. I believe I have now made sense of the Hydro Archon's crime. It has to do with Fontaine's lost history. Huh? Isn't the Hydro Archon just guilty of deceiving her people? Oh, wait, no, that's Farina, and we've already proven that she's not the Hydro Archon. Uh, so when you say Hydro Archon, do you mean the real Hydro Archon we've been kinda talking about? In truth, Everything that you've encountered in Fontaine up until this point can be traced back to the contents of these stone slates. However, I'm uncertain as to how much sense they currently make to you. Okay, let's try to recall the contents of the other three stone slates. Paima will do her best to help you remember. describes what you just said. It seems to show the previous Hydro Archon using her divine power, and then the Oceanids turn into humans. Does that mean that Fontanians are transformed Oceanids? Oh, Paimo wasn't expecting that. But if Oceanids can turn into humans, then perhaps this process can be reversed as well. The second stone slate shows Celestia floating in the sky and the Hydro Archon and her people worshipping it together. But the heavens still brought judgment down upon them. This must be the point when the Hydro Archon and the Fontanians were branded with their original sin. Does this mean that the original sin and the Hydro Archon sin are the same thing? The third slate shows the Hydro Archon sinking into the sea surrounded by many people. Huh. That reminds Paimon, didn't we also watch that happen to someone else? Well, the fourth slate is the prophecy the Fontanians have been talking about. People dissolving into the sea, the Hydro Archon crying on her throne, and so on. We didn't believe that such a crazy disaster could happen at first, did we? But after that incident, it was just a question of when and not if. We know from the case of the serial disappearances of young women that Fontanians can be dissolved in primordial seawater. And the first stone slate tells us that long ago, the Hydro Archon used her power to turn Oceanids into humans. This might be the reason that Fontanians can dissolve. what is about to take place has all happened before. The true sin of the Hydro Archon that Nervalette mentioned, and the original sin cast down on the people of Fontaine by Celestia, has recorded on the stone slates.
It's not as simple as falling into the sea. When Navia fell into the sea, her consciousness was subjected to judgment. The stone slates show the people gathered around the Hydro Archon in the sea. Could that be alluding to the same thing? That doesn't sound quite right. Let's think about this some more. The prophecy from the stone slates found its way into society, but not many people believed it at first. The fortress of Meropede was nearly flooded with primordial seawater, which we know can cause Fontanians to dissolve. It seems increasingly likely that the prophecy may come true. If we hadn't dealt with it in time, things could have gone very badly. dissolve into the primordial sea but won't cease to exist, their essence will flow in the seawater, converge, and take the form of an oceanid! The Hydro Archon was sentenced to death in court, shocking everyone present. Hmm. Perhaps this means that her sin was actually Fontaine's original sin. Navia fell into the water inside those ruins, and she nearly dissolved. She was surrounded by the people of Poisson in a court within her consciousness, and was forced to take part in a trial meant to make her stay. The eruption of the primordial sea at the fortress of Meripede was the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass no matter what. The prophecy's contents can all be verified by recent events. If we combine what we know together, loads of truths should come to light. Huh? Oh, Paimon gets it now! So that's how you can make sense of it! But then it feels like... We're going to have to share some truly shocking revelations! Let's hear them. Incredible! Linny, did you hear that? We're... not real humans. All Fontanians were originally created by the late previous Hydro Archon, with Oceanids as their basis. The evidence for that can be found in how only Fontanians could dissolve in primordial seawater, and how all the girls Vache dissolved were also turned into Oceanids. Oh, and according to Navia, when she was about to get dissolved, she also saw everyone gathered around for a trial. All of them in the shape of Oceanids. Indeed. Yeah, and it follows from the content of the first slate that she probably angered Celestia by creating humans without prior permission. That could also explain why the Oratrix judged the Hydro Archon to be guilty. It's to account for that ancient sin. The Hydro Archon's true sin was creating us. And yet, after many hundreds of years, the Hydro Archon's creations have turned around to try to judge the Archon within the Opera Epicles. <sighs> the twists of history are often the most unexpected of all. just like when Navia fell into the sea? So wouldn't it be trying to show the image of the Hydro Archon also falling into the sea once the prophecy has been fulfilled in the fourth slate? In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Did Paimon get all that right? You've made some keen deductions. I must say, given how much you still don't know, it is impressive that you've already managed to connect so many pieces of the truth. However, while you were able to decode all the information on the slates, they've also been etched with an additional layer of hidden information using a different power source. When we were at the ruins, 
I tried to decipher the hidden information recorded in the slates. But since we only had three slates at the time, I was unable to come to a full conclusion. Now that the slate collection is complete, I shall make another attempt to decipher the narrative recorded within. If everything goes well, we should finally be informed of the unadulterated truth. I believe I should share this truth not only with you, but with all the people of Fontaine as well. I will try to briefly summarize it for you. Your hypotheses regarding the origin of Fontanians and the sin of the Hydro Archon were both correct. In the Fontaine of old, the previous Hydro Archon sensed the yearning of her Oceanid familiars for life on land. The Oceanids were enamored with the beauty and romanticism of human beings, and wishing to have those experiences for themselves, expressed to the Hydro Archon their desire to become of a similar kind. However, even though water as an element is intricately linked with the power of life, the Hydro Archon as one of the seven did not possess the authority to create a new form of human life. Not one to give in, she eventually found a way to create permanent humanoid bodies for her familiars by appropriating the power of this planet's primordial sea. She poured primordial seawater into the Oceanid's blood vessels, creating humanoid mimics in the process. But if Fontanians were to ever come into direct contact with water from the primordial sea, the power within their bodies would escape these artificial restraints and return to the sea. As a result, their forms would collapse, and they would be reverted to their original forms as Oceanids. Of course, the Hydro Archon never received permission from the Heavenly Principles to create a new human race. And thus, the Hydro Archon and all of her creations came to shoulder the original sin of appropriating the power of the Primordial Sea. That is the true history of how the people of Fontaine first came into being. So you... I... We were all Oceanids before we turned into human beings? That's way too much information for me. I think I'm just going to pretend that I never heard a single thing. Wait, but if that's the truth, we can't let the Hydro Archon be sentenced to death. After all, her only sin was creating us. This really might be too much information for your regular Fontanian, but it does answer a lot of our questions. Alas, your hypothesis regarding the third and fourth stone slates was inaccurate. The slates' respective positions are, in fact, correct. A key point of the visual on the third slate is how all the individuals depicted in the water are humans rather than Oceanids. They have not been dissolved, which implies that the water depicted in this slate is not water from the primordial sea. The Nation of Fontaine is the Nation of Hydro, as well as the Nation of Trials and Justice. Instead of being the literal element, the water in the scene symbolizes judgment and justice. You may also recall Navia's experience. When she fell into the sea, her consciousness was surrounded by that of many others who intended to hold a trial to determine her fate. Therefore, the meaning of the third slate is that the people of Fontaine shall try the Hydro Archon at the Court of Justice. Yes, it refers to our present situation. I think I'm following now. So, what you're saying is, even though we decided to put on this trial to avoid fulfilling the prophecy, in truth, everything we've done has happened exactly as the prophecy foretold. So now, it seems, we're the ones making sure it comes true. Well, what should we do? Huh. No matter what, the prophecy will be fulfilled. Is this what it feels like to be a prisoner of fate? If that's the case, does that mean the scene in the fourth slate will also be fulfilled soon? Traveler. I would like to point out another small fallacy in your deductions. 
about the fourth slate. You probably thought that the eruption of primordial seawater beneath the fortress of Meripede served as the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass, yes? However, I believe that rather than being a sure sign, that eruption could in fact only be a small warning of something far worse to come. As for the root cause of the catastrophe, I believe you've already encountered it once before. This eruption was just a small warning of the things to come. We must find the root cause of the disaster. It was both dream and reality. If we're talking about a true culprit, that can only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? The truth, the original sin, the trial, and the root cause of the disaster. So we've met it at last. I understand very well why it has chosen to make an appearance here. That whale does not belong to Tevat. It is a monster that has traversed the stars, weeping all the while. It has been greedily consuming the energy from the planet's primordial sea, using it to grow. That is the main cause for the rising sea levels. And once it has finished consuming all of the energy contained within the sea, its next step will be... You said that when the Hydro Archon first created Fontanians out of Oceanids, she filled their blood vessels with primordial seawater. Precisely. That whale finds the blood of Fontanians nigh impossible to resist. Therefore, when it left the primordial sea, it decided to make its next stop a packed opera house full of food. Food in the form of Fontanians. Uh, we just barely managed to push it back, right? In that case, won't it come back to target the people again once it's managed to recover its strength? That is correct. Indeed, it is more accurate to say that we should thank that Harbinger for buying us some time. Without him, the whale would have likely come onto land far sooner. From the way he looked, he must have been fighting the creature for quite a long time. That battle maniac! We've always known that he had a special connection with that whale, but we definitely didn't expect it to help us out like this! Anyway, now that we know that this whale is the actual cause of the disaster recorded in the prophecy, all we need to do to stop the prophecy would be to find a way to beat it up, right? 
It is too late. It had already absorbed too much of the Primordial Sea's energy before we could notice it. At this point, it has become practically integrated with the sea itself. Even if the entirety of Tevat were to be destroyed, it could still survive and swim off towards some other world. That... that's not something I will accept. We've already done everything we can, and we even found the true culprit. We've come so far. You can't just tell me that the last hurdle is some impossible foe. That's just not fair. Indeed, that's not how a grand performance should end. I'll fight it to the end, no matter what. So the prophecy will be fulfilled no matter what, huh? The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Carry out the death sentence. Farina! No, I still need answers. That shocked expression on your face is just too amusing. I couldn't help myself. You are not Farina. Who are you? Ah, the sweet sound of bewilderment. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. You know, the god. Fosalor? Why did you deceive us? Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, if I was to stand any chance of deceiving the Heavenly Principles. Deceiving the Heavenly Principles? It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe, now does it? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. 
And as one of the seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. So yes, as you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather impossible situation that I found myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. And I was almost growing barnacles by the time I finally realized there was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, while saving everyone at the same time. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Although, looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she left me quite a colossal mess to clean up. <sighs> but one can only play the hand one is dealt. I did not choose this, any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. So you were also once one of the Oceanids, transformed into a human by Egeria's hand? Yes, I was. I always dreamed of becoming human. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and spirit, leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. The me you see before you now is that divinity, and the human counterpart I left behind I named Farina. She could feel joy, sorrow, and everything in between. She could be as vain and conceited, or as meek and vulnerable as she wished. Her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess, as were her shortcomings. But in my eyes, Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way. The person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. All part of the plan, of course. The plan to deceive the heavenly principles. <sighs> Do you still remember the final scene of the prophecy? The Hydra Archon, alone, weeping on her throne. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress, to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Instead, she was forced to take the stage in the Opera House, to embrace the role of leading lady, to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy, all to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming to pass. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. But Farina is only human, isn't she? Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. It must have been torture for her. It has indeed. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. It's been five hundred years, and all along... She's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long, unbearably lonely, and agonizingly painful opera of all time.
Who permitted you to come onto the stage? Now, I understand your admiration for my august self, but I must ask you to keep to the rules. All right, all right. It is not my intent to reprimand you. There is no need to state your name. Just be off with you. Do not distract me from my performance. <laughs> oh, do not jest. Can you not feel it? I am Fosalor. The eyes of countless Fontanians are upon me. I must, at all times, display the utmost elegance and nobility. Farina. Farina. Huh? Uh, who's that? Uh, who's calling me? Where are you? Be not nervous. Be not afraid. I am before you. Wait a moment. You're near me? How can this be? <laughs> Mirror you, huh? You know what? That's not bad. Let's go with that. Mirror me. W what do you wish to say? The prophecy. Have you heard of it? What prophecy? <sighs> Wait. I know. I think. I don't know why, but it's in my head somehow. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Oh, <laughs> very good. You know it well. What's going on? I can't seem to remember anything clearly. The only thing I know for sure is this prophecy. Will it really come to pass? <sighs> yes, it will. And that is why I've come to you. Disaster will come to Fontaine sooner or later. Things will develop just as the prophecy declared. There is no escaping it. But doesn't that mean everyone will die? I'm a Fontanian just like them. Will I dissolve too? <laughs> oh, don't worry. Magical meetings exist in this world precisely to give people a chance to turn things around. It is the reason why you met me today. I will tell you how to save everyone, but you may have to suffer somewhat. Oh, oh, so there's still hope after all. Goodness, you frightened me. You spoke so much and with so much certainty. As for the suffering, well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? But if the prophecy will come true, I'll also die anyway, right? So, if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world, if there were scales, with all the people of Fontaine on one side, and my pain on the other, is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? <laughs> you truly are the perfect human. 
My ideal. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Huh? Don't worry, it's nothing. Listen well. Fontaine has just lost its Hydro Archon. I need you to play a role. That of the new Archon. Play as... a god? That's right. You must begin a never-ending masquerade. You must never let anyone suspect your identity. If you can keep it up, then I shall have my way of defying this prophecy. But should your identity be revealed, then all hope will be lost. But how will I do this? A human assuming the role of a god without being exposed. Don't worry. What you must do is not to turn yourself into a real god. You simply need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Being a human yourself, I'm sure you already know what such an entity would be like. Remember... Your true challenge will not be pursuing divinity, but contending against humanity. Um, I'm still not sure I understand, but I'll try. I'll try to do this. So, how long am I going to have to play this role? To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many, many years. You will endure and not grow old until your task ends. But I promise you, all will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial, and everyone will be saved. A trial? Huh. How exciting. I'll be looking forward to it. The Maison Cardinalise has announced my accession, but this is my first time facing the people. What should I say to most appear like a god? To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. Ahem! Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Opera Epicles. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role of Hydro Archon. Indeed, I am Verena de Fontaine, your new Archon. In truth, I know little about becoming a nation's new god, but it will be my honor to guide you all. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you should have any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalise. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together, after all. This should do it. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts just fine. Okay, and next. That's the new Hydro Archon. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more... assertive. <coughs> hey, did you hear that? She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Shouldn't gods be all-powerful? She's being so... Modest. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person, then? Uh, if you ask me, perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. Wait, what's going on? Why is everyone suspecting me of being a fake? Oh, this is bad. If I get exposed here, there'll be no saving the people from the prophecy. Right. Mir me said that I just need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. 
Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? How would they imagine a god to speak and act? Assertive, with a strong sense of presence. One who can dispel all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. <laughs> oh, very good, my people. Only ones such as you are deserving of my rule. Now, I was wondering if some weak puppet were to one day come onto the stage and claim ownership of this opera house, would the children of Fontaine follow them? <laughs> well, it seems that you would all see right through them. Having passed my test, you are qualified to witness wondrous trials alongside my august self here in this opera house. You may consider my previous act a door gift of sorts. I thought it was a debut that suited the atmosphere. Now then, let us be reintroduced. Ah, uh, so that was just a performance. How could I have forgotten that we were inside an opera house? Her personality? It's quite shocking, to be honest, but I suppose it's a better look than before. Such a fascinating and bold deity. How wonderful. Her future may yet be bright after all. It seems I've turned them around. Best follow this flow and restart my accession speech. My dear people, whether you acknowledge me or not, whether you trust me or nay, I say to you, keep faith in your ardor for justice. We have heard it said that this nation's sins can no longer be washed away. Well, I say that justice is most fragrant when it blooms amid sin. The scales of justice should not weigh heavy in the hands of its god. On one side, it must carry fairness and justice. <laughs> and on the other, praise and applause. <laughs> May law be the prayer on our lips. May judgment be our worship. Let us light the fires and drink to the future of Fontaine. There is no trouble in this world that justice cannot solve. All that is needed is for you, my people, to believe in it, heart and soul. So long as I, the Archon Fosselor, stand within the Opera Epicles. So long as I stand before the Oratrice, I shall even judge the gods of this world! Lady Farina, here are today's case reports, as well as a summary of the follow-up for your perusal. <sighs> Come now, was I not just at the Opera House in person? Leave these kinds of things to Nervillet. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? A magnificent, dramatic, and wondrous trial. A trial to end all things. <sighs> How could you hope to understand? That's true. I fear I lack the ability to grasp your divine thought, Lady Archon. No need for fright. And do not take what I said before too seriously. <laughs> Go now. Do your duties. The trial I await. It will come one day. Lady Farina, uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you for agreeing to see me. No need to thank me. Or rather, thank your own sense of perseverance instead. Long have you stood in line to meet me, have you not? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's just an inevitable consequence of my divine charm. <laughs> All right. Deuteria, is it? 
How is your son's illness? Uh, you remembered me, and you knew of my family, too. Uh, he is doing much better now. In fact, he is far more of an ardent believer than I. He was the one who forced me to seek an audience with you, and to bring your words back to him. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. If this should happen again in the future, please do not hesitate to come and tell me. Going down to citizens' homes every so often, while not usual practice, should serve as a fine change of pace. Oh, you're such a gentle and wise god. Thank you once again, on behalf of my son. Uh, Lady Farina, here are the latest hydrological reports. As for the specific parameters you asked to take note of, I'm afraid things still don't look good. I see. It's as I thought then. As your god, I did already expect this, but I wanted to see how far your human wisdom would allow you to analyze it. All manner of signs indicate that the prophecy will still come to pass. Forget it. <laughs> That's not something you need to worry about right now. Uh, well, as I understand it, the Fontaine Research Institute is also trying to find a way to counter the rising water levels. Really? Have they found anything? I'm... afraid that they haven't found any effective solution thus far. <clears throat> oh, is that so? Well, no wonder. This issue has reached the realm of the gods, after all. Still, their spirit is praiseworthy. The day is finally over. I haven't had a moment to breathe this whole time. But it's good to see that everything's getting on track. There are no longer any voices of suspicion. Maybe this is fine. I just need to keep going. And everyone will be safe. All right, Farina, don't think too hard about this. You need rest. Tomorrow's a new day. Lady Farina, here are the new trial reports for the latest cases, as well as a summary of the follow-up. Uh, there'll be no need for that. I've seen them already. There's no need to go back over scenes I've witnessed in person before! Lady Farina, I I've waited so, so long for this chance to see you in this manner. Indeed, my dear loyal citizen. This joyous moment is an honor for us both. Lady Farina, we're detecting significant hydrological anomalies near Poisson. Understood. Keep monitoring. Keep me informed should anything come up at the Institute. <sighs> I don't think I let anything slip today. I must show the people that there is nothing to worry about. I just don't know when these days will end. I feel utterly exhausted. Best to rest early today, too. Farina, it's oh, it's like a dream being able to speak with you up close like this. I've heard that the first member of our family who was honored to receive an audience with you was Madame Deoteria almost 20 generations ago. <laughs> and what a fine family yours is indeed. It brings me great joy to meet such a faithful believer. 
a descendant of a line most ardent. <laughs> Surely you exaggerate, Lady Farina. Uh, um, my lady? Hmm? What is it, good citizen? Oh, are, are you crying? Uh-huh. <laughs> really now, I didn't even notice. This must be the overflow of Hydro from my person. Well, can't quite help being the god whose dominion is the waters, can I? <laughs> no wonder, no wonder. A manifestation of your power then. Oh, Archon, I am honored to have witnessed it. Honored indeed. <laughs> so lonely. Just how much longer? Hundreds of years must have passed by now. Perhaps the show must go on for hundreds more. I never imagined that it would hurt so much. <laughs> Reached my limit. <laughs> no. Perhaps I reached it long ago. Today I didn't even notice my own tears. I want to tell someone, anyone, about this. But would that not destroy all I've done so far? I've conducted so many investigations across the centuries, but there's not even a sliver of hope that we might break the prophecy. All I can do is keep heart. I must maintain this act. It is the only way to save Fontaine. Please, mirror me. You have to succeed. Farina, you don't have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden. <laughs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. A witness? Huh. Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... He's right. I could confide in him, couldn't I? But... If things don't play out as expected, the people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price. No, Farina. You shouldn't be selfish. <sighs> but what if... What if it's really alright? Farina, you've worked so hard for so, so long. Surely it would be okay to put yourself first for once. Just this once. Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows? Surely it could not hurt. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers, it might never come by again. Think about it long and hard. Nothing. 
nothing to say. I am Farina, the Archon of Fontaine. Everything will surely get better. All you need to do, dear spectator, is to witness my performance until the curtains fall. <sighs> Fine. So even Farina doesn't know the truth? You've never once let her in on the full plan? Yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. Of course, the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. It now seems that that person was you, hidden within the machine all along. Am I right? And then I became one with the Oratrice, taking Fontaine's Gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the God of Justice. Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the Oratrice take down the God of Justice, it will also take down the Divine Throne upon which she has been placed. <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the oratrice. But really, some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had to be, accumulated to enact this death sentence. It was all a part of your plan then? Both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the Oratrice. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydro Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. The destruction of that divine throne. If I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be. Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. But... Oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh, Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. 
I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. <laughs> Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Egeria stole the power of the Primordial Sea, and the heavenly principles stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. I, for my part, am the god of justice. And is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. So, if the theft of the primordial sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. In other words, existence was Egeria's justice, and to me, justice is the continuation of that existence. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on, that should be the justice enthroned over all others. At this point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillet, the highest judge in our land, when you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. Ah, <sighs> the hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. I know I may not sound it, but faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years.
Vox Nouvellet hereby declare People of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? Was that bright light some sort of misdirection? I have a feeling that something huge just happened. <sighs> but since we're all still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. It's time to end this. We must mete out punishment to that beast. I have gained the strength sufficient to deal with it. Through certain means, I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. We should seize the opportunity to pursue our quarry. Traveler, now that the oratories can no longer function, I require an executor to help me mete out justice. The root of the calamities befalling Fontaine, the beast that enacts the prophecy, its name is the all-devouring narwhal. Come with me, traveler. The hour of execution has come. for helping with the cleanup. It should have been my job, but... Oh well. It was just supposed to be a short private training session for me. I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling in the meantime. Well, actually, I had a feeling that it would happen at some point, but they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. What a blunder. I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. Who are you, exactly? Uh, Paimon has an idea. From what she said earlier, she must be Child's master. Skirk, right? It's just that he gave us the impression that she was the... Uh, less... talkative person. I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, on the other hand, managed to defeat the all-devouring Narwhal without using power from beyond this world. So you may speak to me as equals. I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring narwhal. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative, it eats too much, and I have more important things to do with my time than pet sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. All in all, it fails as a pet. Uh, Miss Skirk? Uh, I think you might have missed the point. The point being? Well, being that this pet almost destroyed an entire nation. So what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Wait, is that right? Oh, right. So you don't know him. Sorry, I assumed you did. His name is Sir Telogi. Huh? I am un 
sound familiar with that name. Huh. So Master is insufficiently famous. Huh. How should I describe him then? Have you heard of the name The Fowl? The Fowl? Still nothing? Well, how about the Visionary? Vetterfulnir then? Or Gold Rhine Daughter? Ooh! That one we've heard! Rhine Daughter's part of the Hexen Circle! She's Albedo's mom, right? Oh, so you do know that name. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. I don't actually know them either. But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Rhine Daughter. They are both pursuing some form of perfection. Wait! Didn't you also mention a visionary person? Hyman didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. I believe it expedient to inform you. That the all-devouring Narwhal used up nearly all its strength fighting you. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. As such, the Fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over should now be in full swing. What? Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the Heavenly Principles. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then, Will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away? Emergency rescue!
Angela Talks Post-Disaster Rebuilding. I recently visited Poisson to meet with Miss Navia, spokesperson of the Spina di Rosula, and we spoke about Poisson's present and future. Old soil can still give birth to new bloom, Miss Navia stated. Hope is like seeing a small cookie when you're starving late at night. You just need a little of it. Skyship Winglet, lunar brain of the Fontaine Research Institute. The various disputes that have arisen on account of Mr. Edwin have suddenly become a shield over the Institute, with Jurier turning out to be a once overlooked hidden gem. People always call the first researcher mad, but few know what to call the second. And should that latter person achieve a miracle, they would find it all the harder to find a word with which to classify him and his team. Wow! Paimon barely recognizes the people in the reports! Are those really Jurier and Navia? They sound like real big shots! What do you think? Pretty enthralling, huh? The Steambird's idea was pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. The value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Edwin's assistant, Jurier, created a true flying ship, while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. Pyman's curious too! Uh, wait a minute. Didn't we watch everything happen from start to finish? What's there to be curious about? And that's exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. You're the best incubators of news, if you haven't noticed. And also, with you around, I'm sure I'll get to see that duke. Uh, are you sure? Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Oh, this time will be different. Come on! Let's head to Poisson first, and then make a trip to the fortress. There are some things you'll only know when you get there. Navia! Oh, it's you. What brings you all here? Hey, we're just having a look around. I'm here to update myself on how things are going here. Hmm? Oh, the Fatui are here too. Uh, uh, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Garunt Snezhevich. He represented the Knave in sending us a large amount of supplies and is helping with our work. Our residents are hard at work as well. Thanks to everyone, work is progressing nicely. We've lost a lot of people, but we're moving forward. That will have to be enough. Hello, Miss Charlotte. I'm a big fan of yours. I especially like that article you wrote last year about Fontaine's stray cats. But if you don't mind, could you not emphasize our role too much in your report? It's not charity we're doing here. We just happen to share the same interests as the Spina. I get where you're coming from. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Or would you be willing to feature as friendly neighbors? That would be fine. Thanks. Oh, you're back too. How are things? We finished laying down the construction materials. It'll be another hour before the workers are able to go over there. Huh? You're here too, Clarand? Well, her reputation's greatly risen after that whole duel business with Miss Farina. So she's here in Poisson to wait out the heat. Uh, all right, all right. She really came here to help me out. There's too much to consider in the reconstruction of Poisson. The Spina has need of more decision-makers. And, well, I do already happen to be connected to Mr. Callus. Oh, wait just a moment. Do you mind me asking a few questions? You know, about how you felt before the duel. About what it was like facing down a god. There's lots of exciting material there, I bet. Ugh, forget it. I'm sure you can find a better theme than that, Miss Charlotte. Oh, I see you're the same as always. Couldn't you do me a favor, for Navia's sake? Well, if we're talking about doing things for my sake, you might as well just take a few more photos of me. Or of the Traveler. It's better than wasting time persuading Chlorand at any rate. Of course I will. I'm not gonna let him off that easy. All right, then everyone who wants to be in the photo, gather up! And smile! How did it go? 
was it a good shot? Did Paimon look cute in it? Not bad. Your addition really helped the composition of the picture. All right, hang on a moment. Let me snap a few more shots. All right, that should do it. I'll be back here later anyway, so uh, let's call it a day. <laughs> You're very quick. Speed is of the essence when it comes to the news, and freshness is the key. Also, not to brag, but I'm pretty good at building connections. Who knows? I might eventually get that interview with you after all, Miss Clarand. Wow, you really do have that never-say-die spirit. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'll hazard a guess that this is how you got that interview at the Fortress of Maripede. Whoa, you're well informed. Let me make a guess too. I asked Sijuin who told Monsieur Nervillette and he told you, right? That's a very complete information chain. In truth, all Monsieur Nervillette asked me was, when did the fortress become so friendly towards the media? I told him that it was best not to speak too soon. There's no guarantee that Ridesley will make a personal appearance. You're right. I've got to treasure every moment I have with them. In which case, I'll be making a move first. Uh, stay safe now. And tell me if you hear anything interesting. I'll treat you to afternoon tea in exchange. You seem curious about the fortress. Of course. Ah, uh, that Risley. I still remember going down to the fortress to grill him for information on my father's case. Boy, did he take me for a ride. Without telling me anything, of course. But he did invite you to tea, didn't he? Two large pots of it, in fact. It was good tea, though. I have to agree. The tea there is very good. Ah, speaking of that, would you like to have some today? I mean, you've got time, right? Well, I'd be partial to some shortbread. Wow, <laughs> it's like we've got a menu or something. <laughs> sure, sure. Mm, good. What flavor of biscuits would you like, Mr. Snezhevich? Me? Uh, I'm fine with anything. But I would prefer chocolate, should you have it. All right. Leave it to me. I'll go over the newly arrived supplies with you later, Mr. Snezhevich. We should be able to finish the preparatory work today. That works great for me. Huh. Is it just me, or did you get a new lipstick? Uh, I did. It was a gift from Sijuin. Want to give it a try? I think the color would suit you, too. Wow. Guess we're here again, huh? There's a real nostalgic feeling to this place. Looks like you've been missing us. Duke! Did you come all the way to the entrance to greet us? Of course. I'm here to welcome you and our dear Miss Charlotte, whom our good head nurse recommended to me. It's an honor to finally meet the much-rumored Duke! Thank you for consenting to my visit to the fortress, sir! No need to thank me. But that said, I shouldn't be the focus of your interview. I trust you recall our agreement? Of course, of course. All right then, this way. Uh, uh. Uh. Hmm? Hey, no need to be so nervous. I've already taken all the photos we need. Um, Miss Charlotte. Do these pictures really need to be published on the cover of the Steambird? It would seem that Miss Lorvine doesn't want her face to appear beside that of Mr. Jurier, hmm? Sir, please don't say things like that. <laughs> but it looks like dear Mr. Jurier denies it. Might this interview be very important to you, then? No, I, I, I just... This is my first time being interviewed, and I'm very thankful to the Steambird for... Now, I might not look it, but I actually did meet Mr. Edwin once. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed chatting with you more. You've definitely got more of that genius vibe going on. The boat that brought about a miracle. The ark that saved the people. Why, you recreated a myth back there, like an emissary of legend. Still, if I might ask, where's that flying ship now? 
Ha! Looks like Charlotte's trying to get herself another exclusive scoop. I have to apologize, but that ship is presently in the bowels of our factory. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to get a shot of it. Really? Well, then in that case, could I have an interview with you to make up for that loss? You already know my answer, I'm afraid. Best you interview our head nurse instead. Or perhaps you'd like to take another photo of this couple of researchers? Did you really have to use the word couple? Well then, two solo photos will do. Is my hair messed up? Please, someone help me have a look. Things sure are getting pretty lively here. Ah, we've seen this kind of thing before. Oh, seems like everyone's here. Would any of you like to try this new drink I came up with? Ah, Sijuin. Uh, uh, hey, Miss Charlotte. Why don't you, uh, take some pretty photos of our head nurse? Hmm? Uh, sure. Come on, Miss Sijuin. Over this way. Let's find a brighter spot. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, do I have to smile? So, how have things been at the fortress? Same old, same old, as you can see. Fontaine's undergone some changes, but this place is still more or less the same. Other than that flying ship, I got a tad too much attention, I think. That's why I decided to let the interview go through. We should direct more public opinions toward the behind-the-scenes heroes. Am I right, Mr. Jurier? Miss Lurvine? You're too kind, sir. I believe that you too should have your day in the sun. Not that you would want that, just pity. <laughs> I'll just leave the spotlight to you two. I see. Lots of things happened that day, huh? Anyway, regarding that harbinger, I'm not sure you remember, but his three young followers are still waiting for his return. He sure did win them over, huh? I'll tell them that there's good news and bad news. The good being that their boss seems fine and the bad being that they must face extended sentences for abetting his escape. Oh, actually, what about you? Are things gonna change for you too? What change can there be? The fortress will keep chugging along, and so will my duties. As to what Miss Farina's departure will mean for the nation, and if our laws and governance will be transformed, we'll leave those to the folks in the overworld. Hey everyone, the photo shoot's done! Good. In that case, let's call it a day here. Thanks for your cooperation. Come on, Traveler, let's go! Till next time, everyone! There'll be a next time? Maybe! Who knows? I might write a story about the underwater factory next time. Until then! Alright, last stop, the docks! You know, I'd love to see you in one of Charlotte's photo shoots one day. Is that really necessary? Our line of work doesn't really require much photographing. It's precisely because we don't need the picture that they'll have value as keepsakes. We don't really look all that opposed to the idea, you know? Maybe I'm just happy that I managed to once again avoid the spotlight. I think this interview went well either way. Yes, you successfully kept prying eyes away by using Mr. Jurier and Miss Lurvina shields. Very good. You should be happy for them. They have a bright future ahead of them. Navia mentioned that she stayed in touch with Linny and the others after working together. Apparently, they've been at the docks distributing these strange pockets the whole time since. Traveler, Paimon. Ah, and Miss Charlotte, too. Would you like a magic pocket? What sort of gadget is it? It's a wondrous bag that can be used to carry many things. The water level has returned to normal. But if you see any of your things floating around, you can use this to carry them. Or you could trick a friend into doing it for you. Trick a friend? Hmm, 
Hmm, I wonder which of my friends would fall for that. You could just make a friend like Fremene here. Isn't that right, Fremene? <sighs> Is this what you meant by, I'll help you make some more friends? To be honest, that sounds pretty sweet. Could I have your contact, please? Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, please, write down my address. You sure are working hard to help Fremene socialize. He was the one who proposed doing this. He even wants to assist in our magic shows. Yes, I was planning to first introduce Pear as an assistant, and later Fremene himself. In the future, I think we can leave underwater escape magic to him too. That said, would anyone want to see a diver escape underwater? Oh, it'll work out. Every journey begins with the first step. He'll become a part of our show eventually. Uh, Lynette, could you come over? Miss Charlotte says she wants to take a picture of us. Got it. My, that Charlotte is rather perceptive. She got rid of everyone the moment she realized I had something to say to you. Hmm. So, how have things been, Traveler? Father says that you did a great deal during the latest events. She's very grateful for your contributions to Fontaine. Ah, uh, that's alright. We were more than happy to help. So, what's she doing now? Oh, I guess you haven't heard. Well... After Lady Farina left, Father and Monsieur Nervilet opened negotiations, during which he gave Fontaine's gnosis to her as a... diplomatic gift. Yes, I was quite surprised at first myself. But when I thought it over, there were actually a number of things going for it. It could have been done as an apology for the incident with Lord Child, or as thanks for his help in tying the all-devouring Narwhal down. Furthermore, Father did also lend significant aid to Fontaine and Poisson. I would agree, but I've also heard that it seems that Monsieur Nervilet has had a significant change of heart regarding the matter. Uh, so there's some reason for this that only Nervilet knows about? I suspect you'll have to ask him about that yourself. Ah, yes, speaking of which, I did see him strolling around the entrance to the Fortress of Meripede a while back. They say that he's returned to Snezhnaya to recover from his wounds. I hear that the recent disaster really did a number on his health. That's true. When you think about it, we've had loads of run-ins with the Fatui. To think we'd be allied with them this time. So shocked by such a simple switching of sides? Father. Well, well, what do you know? Come to the docks to see how my children are doing and meet the Traveler by chance. Please do not pay my accomplishments in Fontaine too much mind. I would have done them regardless. Are you going to take the Gnosis back to Snezhnaya? That is our duty as Harbingers, yes. Don't be too preoccupied with sides. The goal of the Fatui concerns not a single place or person, but the entire world. With such a grand goal in mind, it is inevitable that we must wear many masks. Switching my masks is something I've always done. Well, that depends on many things. No one truly knows what the future holds. What good is honesty if you can't rely on it forever? As for you, I very much look forward to our next collaboration. Good things cannot be achieved alone, and you've proved yourselves to be great partners. 
A vision? <sighs> All right. I'll remember to return it. Thank you for keeping it safe for him this entire time. And that's a wrap for me. It, huh? You... you're... Greetings, Miss Journalist. Uh, um... Hello! If I'm not mistaken, there are diplomatic channels I'll need to report to to take a photo of you. That is correct. So forgive me, but I will not be able to serve as a subject in your article. However, feel free to write as much as you'd like about our dear magicians and our upcoming rookie talent. I... I will! The sea breeze is quite pleasant. Oh, I shall continue my walk while the weather remains so agreeable. Farewell. Farewell, father. Oh, she has such an intimidating presence. I didn't even dare to take a picture. Thankfully, I've already wrapped up all my pre-scheduled interviews. Thank you all. This'll be more than enough for me to write about, I'm sure. Don't be too nervous. Why don't you take a magic pocket before you go? Here, traveler, Paimon, you take one too. To move things about? That's right. <laughs> Funny. I was giving out magic pockets when we first met, too. And what do you know? I'm doing the exact same thing right now. So many things have happened, but the pockets are still the pockets. I guess this must be life. We will all follow our own paths, and serendipity will lead you to your fated friends. All right, then. We'll be handing out pockets in some other districts later, so we'll get going now. Have a good day, you two. So, you really are here, Nivellet. I didn't think you were going to have free time this hour of the day. Really? Oh, I suppose you must have met Mr. Linney. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. In any case, you came at a good time. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting, so I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. Aww, Paimon's glad that you remembered! Thank you for keeping us on your mind, what with you being busy and all. Alright, let's have it then. How was Fontaine actually saved? The whole business is still quite the mystery to us. <sighs> It is strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth when it finally comes time to say them out loud. Wow! So that's what happened? Fossilord destroyed the Divine Throne of the Hydro Archon and restored your power to you, transforming you into a fully fledged elemental dragon sovereign! But Paimon still doesn't quite get what you did to save the Fontanians from dissolving. For me, the authority of the ancient dragons refers to absolute control over the hydro element. Fontanians were incomplete humans born of Egeria's use of the power of the primordial sea, with constitutions similar to that of mimics. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragon's authority to grant them true blood, after the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true humans, and thus would naturally no longer be dissolved by water from the primordial sea. Fossilor must have counted on you to make that decision as well! Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone! Yeah! And in a manner of speaking, Fosalor finally managed to fulfill the original Hydro Archon's wish to turn Oceanids into real people, too! <laughs> it seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown chasm when he was young. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring narwhal. 
But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster. At most, he would have had tangential liability. As for the judgment passed by the Oratrice during the trial, whether it was due to that liability by association, or Fosalor deliberately using him to buy time for us on the assumption that he would be able to hold the creature off, I cannot say. Guess Fosalor had Fontanians in mind the whole time! In the end, it was thanks to her that they finally became real humans! Uh, hang on a second! Paimon suddenly got another question! Back when Fontanians hadn't yet become real humans, were the children they had also transformed Oceanids? Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? Yeah! Lynette said the fountain is where all the waters in Fontaine converge! In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom, but instead a form of ritual. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would later descend as new humans in the coming months. ritual won't be of any further use, but it'll probably live on as a local custom. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Yeah, about that. Risley said Farina has already left. What's that all about? Ah, Lady Farina. The people are only aware that her death sentence has not been carried out. She abdicated the post of Hydro Archon and left affairs related to that title to me before leaving the Opera House. I related Fosalor's words to her faithfully and completely. After hearing them, she seemed neither saddened nor comforted. She simply said that she was tired and needed to rest. Having said that, she then packed her things and moved out of the Opera House, not unlike how an ordinary person might. Um, but she's still got a place to stay, right? You need not worry. I will make arrangements to ensure that she will not want for food, clothing, board, or travel. In truth, I am somewhat happy for her. The wear and tear on her spirit will, of course, take time to heal. But now that she no longer has to play the role of Fosalor the Hydro Archon, she can finally lay down her burdens and lead a normal life. What about you, then? What are your plans now that you've regained your full powers as the Hydro Dragon? After Fosalor passed on, the Oratrice also ceased to function. This matter will directly affect our trials. After much careful consideration, I've decided to take over its role in our courts. From now on, I shall hear cases and pass verdicts by myself. Looks like you're still considering stuff from the perspective of the Udex, huh? As an elemental dragon, there are indeed many things that I must do. But this power and this duty, in a manner of speaking, you could say that both were granted to me. As such, before I attend to my other responsibilities, I must first and foremost continue to serve Fontaine as its highest judge. The duty of the Hydro Sovereign and the duty of the Udex shall coexist within my person. Additionally, the Hydro Archon's departure has brought about another problem, which is that the Opera House shall no longer produce Indemnidium. That's true. That power was derived from the people's faith in the Hydro Archon, wasn't it? Wait, but the various mechs and machines in the city are all still okay. Where are they getting their energy from? As I am now, I have full command over New Musia, and it can serve as a complete substitute. Another reason why I cannot quite leave Fontaine immediately. Wow. This ancient dragon's authority stuff is really quite useful, huh? Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Oh, that's right! given it to the name as a diplomatic gift or something. Leaving aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. Their sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's divine throne is now no more, and I do not need the Gnosis's power. As such, it has lost all meaning for Fontaine. If the Fatui have impure designs, and we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. Ugh, what complicated considerations! Paima thought you were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the knave and as an apology to child! Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. You will soon be heading to Natlan, I presume? I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide, 
so all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. As far as I'm aware, Natlon can be said to be a nation of dragons. A nation of dragons? You mean like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlon have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Natlon is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Nave that I believe may be useful to you. The harbinger known as the Captain has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. The Captain? Sounds like a real tough customer. Seriously, everywhere you look there's a Fatui harbinger doing their thing! I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlon. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to you. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Uh, hang on a sec. Paimon still got a question about the Gnosis. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guessed that there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is the Fatui's intelligence division. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Uh, what is it? In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. What next? Hmm. The all-devouring narwhal isn't here, so I'm no longer getting any interference. I can finally catch the scent of your power. What it's made of. It is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons, but with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in. It's quite a novel blend. I'm sure I've encountered something like this before. What was it again? I do not know what you speak of. Ah, oh, of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a Gnosis. Well, that much is true. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her Gnosis to me. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did. I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young. And I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense. Which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune, to prevent any disasters from befalling you. To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they, and when did they die? <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. If you're interested, though, I could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Next time? You believe we will meet again? I do. Wait... I have a disciple of my own, don't I? He can be the messenger then. That's what she told me. Whether it would prove useful or not, I wanted to pass that information on to you. The remains of the Third Descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Paima just thought they looked like chess pieces. How could they be a person's remains? 
All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui! If she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. I guess that you might already be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element-compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the Third Descender. Hmm, I wonder, does your body also possess similar properties? Like, uh, like being able to use elemental powers without a vision! That does sort of count as special compatibility, right? No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. It just feels... creepy. Comparing the Traveler to the dead Third Descender and all. That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad luck! <sighs> Once Child recovers, let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way! I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now! Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for this moment as well. But... She sacrificed herself in the end as a god, and she suffered through all those years as a human! Was that really what she wanted? I suppose that would be the mystery of a god's will. I suspect not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the earth as raindrops. Life flows like water, and rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what, ultimately, is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us? More attack, perhaps? Ah, uh, Pinot's just being enthusiastic. We're old friends now, she gets it. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to see our two most avid adventurers again. Looking for the next challenge, I see. Actually, we do in fact have a rather urgent commission that is still open. Having read the details, however, I don't believe you'd consider it to be lucrative. We were just kidding. So what's the situation? To put it simply, the requester is looking for a temporary replacement actress for their musical. The original cast member ran into some issues and is currently unable to perform the role. But the troupe has also been experiencing some financial difficulties, so unfortunately they cannot afford to pay the replacement actress. Hmm, that does sound like a tricky situation. So basically, they're looking for a volunteer? That's right. Our adventurers reached out to many actresses, but none of them were willing to take the job. There are only a few days left until the performance. If they can't find someone in time, they'll probably have to postpone the show. And delays tend to create all sorts of new problems. Got it. Oh, this one's a doozy. What do you think, Traveler? Any ideas? Even if we took the commission, neither of us have any experience starring in musicals. Hmm... If you're interested in helping, why not start by having a chat with the requester? He's right over there. Maybe you can't fill the role yourselves, but you might be able to help him figure out another solution. Maybe there's something he hasn't thought of. Oh, it's that guy, huh? No wonder, he looks like he just ate a sour lemon. Paimon approves! Let's go! Hello there! Are you the guy looking for a new actress? Wait, I know you two! Are you really willing to act in my musical? 
Wow, sounds like we're pretty famous in Fontaine already. <laughs> uh, but to answer your question, neither of us have any experience in musicals. But we heard that you're in a bit of a bind, so we figured we could at least try to help you think of a solution. Ah, I see. It's okay. I knew that asking for a volunteer was a long shot. If we can't find someone to step in, we'll have no choice but to cancel the show. It would be such a shame. <sighs> That's the thing. We're not some high-profile theater troupe, just a group of amateur enthusiasts. All our sets and props are very crude. We're grateful enough just to get an audience, never mind ticket fees. If we had a way to make this profitable, things might have turned out differently. But now, it looks inevitable that we'll disband. Disband? You're splitting up the troop? Oh, I guess the lady at the Adventurer's Guild didn't tell you? Yeah, this is supposed to be our final show together as a troop. One last show. And after that, we go our separate ways. So we were really hoping to end on a high note. Nobody wants things to just... fizzle out. Not after all the time and effort we've invested into it. Yeah, the leading lady, in fact. She's been dealing with a chronic illness ever since childhood, and unfortunately, it flared up again recently. It really drains all her energy, so she's in no state to perform. The show just won't be the same without her. But for everyone else's sake, I still hope we can find a way to hold the performance on schedule. Got it. We have a clearer picture now. Uh, let's see if we can come up with any ideas. Uh, what if we sponsored the show? Um, Traveler, how much more are you carrying? Uh, please. There's no need to go that far. I wouldn't feel right asking such a huge favor. And I can't promise that we'd ever be able to pay you back. Hmm, good point. If the actress just goes through the motions for the Mora, that's not exactly rescuing the show. We should find someone who will put on the best performance possible. Hmm... Oh, wait! What about... Um, you know who? <laughs> that's how you know we're the best of partners. Anyway, she should have all the free time in the world right now. She's really good at performing, and she was once super popular with the crowd. Performing in a musical should be a piece of cake for her. Who are you thinking of? Sounds like someone famous. Her! You're... That was a joke, right? Uh, nope. Paimon doesn't actually know if she's performed on stage before, but Paimon's pretty confident that she'd be really good at it. You're not wrong there. She has actually performed in a number of big-name shows before. They were one of the reasons she was so popular. But even if she's no longer the Hydro Archon, it's not like she's suddenly a commoner. She's still an idol to many people in Fontaine, including myself. I just think Lady Farina might feel a bit out of place in an amateur troupe like ours. Well, yes, but... But... Huh... Fair enough. I mean, if she was actually willing to, then of course I'd be honored to have Lady Farina star in our show. I'm sure the rest of the troupe would be delighted too. I'm sure everyone in our troupe has probably dreamt of performing on stage with her one day. Of course, it all depends on whether she's interested. She might consider this opportunity beneath her. No point in stressing about that. We'll only know if we ask her. And besides, things are different now. There's no reason for her to be all high and mighty anymore. Thank you for your help. I guess I'll just stay here and wait for the good news. Good luck! Wait, where does Farina actually live nowadays? She used to live in luxury at the Palais Mermonia, but she's, uh, moved out, right? As it happens, I have her current address here. I can provide it to you. When did you get here? <laughs> I came over when things were starting to sound more promising. I thought I should be at the ready in case my assistance is needed. It is my duty to support commissioners in any way I can. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Well, 
Now that we've got the address, we'll go find Farina. Back in a jiffy. Uh, did Catherine really give us the right address? She lives here? Not that there's anything wrong with this place. It's just uh, a bit of a step down from the Palais Marmonia. You know, it's common courtesy to make sure the homeowner isn't an earshot when you're denigrating their abode. <laughs> okay, when did Poppy out of thin air become all the rage? First Catherine and now you? I was just out on a shopping trip. I ran out of macaroni, so I went to grab a few more bags. I used to have a much wider range of choices when it came to food. But now, I'm finding that simple, traditional home cooking can be quite delicious, too. Not at all. As long as you have different kinds of sauces in, you can have macaroni and tomato sauce one week, macaroni and bolognese the next. Oh, sounds like you're really struggling to cope. How rude! Questioning my cooking skills, the audacity! It's not like I have a very eventful life these days. Actually, I barely leave the house. So I don't see how it's unusual that my meals are a little simpler now, too. Besides, I'm sure I could master dishes like la lettre fossilor or blubber profiteroles in no time, if I felt so inclined. Ah, there it is. You don't know how to cook. <laughs> not yet, maybe, but... Anyway, what are you even doing here? I do hope you didn't come here just to ogle at my fall from grace. Let me first be clear that I'm not taking guests at this time. So if you're just here to clown around, then please be on your way. Shoot! Sorry! We're sorry! Please don't be mad! Yeah, exactly! What the traveler said! Paimon wasn't trying to make fun of you. Hang on a sec, you aren't exactly holding back either. My help? Uh, well, maybe you're forgetting that I'm no longer the mighty Hydro Archon. I don't even have a vision, you know. Don't worry, it's nothing that serious. It's just very specific, and you're the one with the power to help. Oh? Well, if that's the case, then... Fine. I'll spare you the lecture about your attitude just now. So tell me, what specifically makes this matter so... specific? Ah, I see. I knew you couldn't have come all this way just to amuse yourselves at my expense. After all, I was once the brightest star in all of Fontaine, well-versed in all the various performing arts. A mere musical is well within my capabilities. <laughs> but given the present circumstances, I'm afraid I must regretfully decline your casting request. How come? It sounds like this would be a breeze for you. True. But I have made a decision to retire from the stage. Although I am no longer required to play the role of the Hydro Archon, the time I spent inhabiting that character has left an indelible mark on me. Centuries of pretending to be a different person changes you completely. I'm not the same person I once was. Of course, that can't be undone now. It's too late, and I have no intention of reinventing myself all over again. But at least I can say that I no longer desire to play any new roles. Uh, Paimon can understand, but this is just a one-off part to fill in for someone who's sick. Surely that's okay. Whether it's a one-off or not, it's a boundary that I've committed to no longer cross. If I make an exception to the rule now, I'm just leaving a back door for myself. Which would be the same as not having a boundary in the first place. So I'm not going to perform, and that is that. Okay, guess there's no convincing you. Well, is there anything else we can do to help out the troop? Otherwise, they'll just have to disband without any fanfare. 
Do you know any other actors who might be interested in the role? Nope. Short and to the point, okay. I've never been great at maintaining relationships. Besides, anyone I've ever worked with probably couldn't wait to get rid of me. Since I'm just an ordinary person now, they'll probably just laugh in my face if I go asking them for help. True, but I mean, could you even blame them? I show up out of the blue, begging and groveling for their help with a show they won't even get paid for? Ooh, no way. I'm dying from embarrassment just thinking about it. <sighs> nope, not happening. Well, is there anything else we can do? This performance really means a lot to the guy we're working for. Have I not made myself clear? You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't want this job, nor do I know of anyone else who would. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean for that to sound so harsh. I wish I could help, really. But if I thought I had the answer to this problem, I would have said so by now. It's all right, Farina. Paimon just wanted to make sure we tried everything. Oh, everyone in the troupe will be so disappointed. Yeah, I guess that's all we can do now. All right, then. We'll see you around, Farina. Uh, toodaloo to you, too. I'm going home to take a rest now. Huh? What's going on? Are they arguing? That's besides the point. I'll ask you again. Why did you start looking for a replacement without my consent? When did I tell you I'm going to take a step back? You didn't need to say it. We've known each other for how long now? We know the signs. But you never tell us about your illness, even when it's clearly flaring up. And that gives you the right to make a decision on my behalf? Shortly after you left, the troop's lead actress came to the Adventurers Guild, she believes that she's healthy enough to perform. Excuse me, but can you both take a moment to discuss something else for now? The adventurer assigned to your commission has returned. Sorry, I was just dealing with a little misunderstanding. So, how did your conversation with Farina go? Sadly, it's a no from her. We tried to persuade her, but she wasn't having it. She doesn't want to play the role for personal reasons. I see. Well, circumstances have changed a little, so maybe that's not such bad news after all. You see, our leading lady has just informed me that she's well enough to make it to the show after all. Staging the musical with the full original cast was always the dream, of course. Oh, right! Sounds like everything worked itself out then! Yeah, she'd be livid! We'd get the scolding of a lifetime! Jeez! Is Lady Farina really so harsh with people? Only joking, calm down. So, uh, guess we can consider this case closed now, huh? Despite the fact that we failed to complete the commission, we were still racking our brains for ideas on the way back here. <laughs> <sighs> Look, there's no point arguing with you about this anymore. You've made yourself very clear, so I'll stop looking for a replacement. This is the last chance we have, though. If your illness flares up again, there won't be time to find anyone to replace you. So, are you absolutely sure you'll be able to handle it? The whole team is putting everything they have into this final performance. We have to make sure it goes ahead. Yes, I'm completely confident. I've been taking a new medication from the doctor, and it's working brilliantly. I'll definitely be able to tough it out until the performance day. I share everyone's desire to commemorate all our years as a troupe with a proper farewell show. So, the last thing I want is to be left out. Every one of us thinks of this troupe as their home, myself included. You're right. I'm sorry. I let myself get too worried about the show. I should have asked for your permission first. Eh, all's well that ends well. Sounds like the show will go on! Uh, sure. Hey, how did 
at you. Uh, I, I was just passing by because I realized I forgot a couple of items on my shopping list. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm coming. No need to drag me. Uh, ahem. Hello, one and all. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation just now. Farina? Didn't you say you were gonna take a rest at home? What are you doing here? I... I was just ever so slightly concerned about the situation you mentioned. Yes, a teensy bit concerned, that's all. When you came to talk with me earlier, I jumped right to explaining my position and said some strongly worded things. And all before I even had a full grasp of the situation. Anyway, I just feel a bit bad about how it went down. I'm sorry, Paimon. Oh, it's totally fine! Paimon didn't take any of that personally. You really have a knack for asking the most uncomfortable questions, don't you? I felt very sheepish, having had a change of heart after flatly refusing you. And then, to make matters worse, you caught me. But in any case, it sounds like the issue has already been resolved. Yeah. When they said they were going to ask for your help, I almost had a heart attack. I mean, how could we be worthy of having Lady Farina star in our show? There's no need to think like that. And no need to keep addressing me as Lady. Just Farina is fine. I was wondering... If this troop is so important to all of you, why does it have to disband? If the difficulties are purely financial, then there must be a solution. You could put the shows on pause while you look for a sponsor, for instance. Everyone seems so devoted to the troop. I'm sure if you keep chipping away, you'll find a way through. <sighs> we all want to believe that, but some things are just beyond our control. Everything's been going downhill ever since we lost our director. She was the heart and soul of our troop. She kept us going. Her name was O'Reilly, and she was the founder as well as the artistic director of our troop. And tragically, she was a victim in this serial disappearances case. What? That's actually how I recognize these two. It was all thanks to their efforts that the true culprit was brought to justice. <sighs> but still, no sentence can bring our director back to us. She was a loyal fan of your performances, Lady, uh, Miss Farina. They were what first inspired her to get into musical theater. She rallied many people around her who were destitute or had lost their sense of purpose in life, and convinced them to join her troupe. She wrote her own scripts, acted on stage, and mentored each and every one of us. People loved our performances back then. We seemed to be going from strength to strength. Things were really looking up for us. And then disaster struck. Yeah. After that, the entire troop fell into disarray. And none of us know anything about script writing, let alone how to handle the business side of things. We've been doing the best we can. But despite our efforts, things are slowly but surely falling apart. It's agonizing, but ultimately, we'd rather end things now on our own terms than stick it out to the bitter end and watch all our dreams turn to dust. Oh. <sighs> what a terrible waste. A gifted artist from humble beginnings, who achieved so much and no doubt had much more to give. And then her life was so cruelly taken. I suppose it's fair to say, then, that this final show, besides being your farewell to the stage, is also your final gift for her? Yes, exactly. We all miss her terribly. Well, good thing I followed the Traveler here. After hearing this tragic tale, I can no longer stand by and do nothing. Uh, Farina? I know what you're thinking, but I by no means plan to cross the boundary I've set for myself. Besides, they're no longer looking for a replacement anyway. I can, however, provide some artistic guidance from the vantage point of a highly experienced audience member. But only if you feel this is something that would help, of course. 
Oh, most definitely. We'll take any guidance that you can give. We unfortunately don't have any budget for a consultant, though. Will that be a problem? I don't need any compensation. All I'd ask in return, if you're willing, is that you tell me some more about the life and work of your late director. Something I've begun to realize since my departure from the Opera Epicles is that there's a lot you don't see when you observe everything from on high. The law only judges criminal behavior and does not weigh human emotion. The court's verdict can settle the question of criminal liability, but what about all the unresolved emotions of the parties involved? What happens to them? An interesting answer. But if you ask me, I think all emotion shall ultimately return home to the heart and slowly settle with the passage of time. Take, par exemple, how this troop pines for their late director. Things such as this I have never witnessed before. And so I should like to observe, perchance to understand. Huh! Still a fan of your old dramatic monologues then, huh? You just want to get back in on the action, don't you? No, no, no. This is a completely different situation. <sighs> Pearls before swine. <laughs> the name's not swine, it's Paimon! Would you be willing to join me? Come on, take a break from adventuring to listen to a story. Thank you all so much. Our director was a huge fan of Miss Farina's performances, as of course we all are. All right, follow me. We'll go to our usual practice space. Please excuse the size. It's a little on the smaller side. Huh? Lady Farina? What's Lady Farina doing here? Hello, all. Allow me to explain. As of today, Lady... Uh, Miss Farina will be supporting our production of the Little Oceanid in the role of Artistic Consultant. These two over here are the ones that made it possible. They kindly reached out to Miss Farina on our behalf. I'm sure they need no introduction. You bet! That was the trial of the century! You helped bring our director's murderer to justice. We can't thank you enough. Oh, please don't mention it. We're just here to join in on the fun. So, you were saying, The Little Oceanid? Yeah, that's the name of our final show. It's an unfinished script left behind by our director. One of our greatest regrets is that she never got to complete it. So, if we can bring it to the stage and make it a successful show, we can all take some solace in that. Wait, but if it's not finished, then... Yeah, we've been battling issues on every front trying to realize this dream. Anyway, let me give you a quick summary of what the story's all about. The protagonist of the story is a young Oceanid who transforms herself into human form, despite the protests of her family. She longed to live just like any other human, and sure enough, she found friendship and even love. Everything seemed perfect. But one day, her true identity was exposed, and her world came crashing down around her. So far, so good. A classic tale. What happened after that? That's one of the issues we've been trying to deal with. Unfortunately, this was as far as the director got with her script. We need a proper ending so we can bring this musical to the stage. But people have different opinions on which direction to take it in. We still haven't decided between a happy ending or a true-to-life tragedy. By true-to-life, you mean the director's sudden disappearance? Yeah. Like they say, truth is stranger than fiction. But then there's the question of whether we really want to use the stage to pass our raw pain onto the audience. Exactly. A lot of the time, people come to watch a show just hoping for some light entertainment. We have to consider their emotional stake in this, not just our own. And one last thing. We're still waiting on confirmation from two of our main actors. 
The first is Paulo, who plays the protagonist's lover. He's locked himself away to focus on writing an ending for the script, but the deadline's passed and we still haven't heard from him. The other is Vilmon, who plays the main antagonist. He took the director's death pretty hard, hasn't set foot in the city since. He did write to us, promising that he'll be there for the final performance, but we haven't seen or heard from him since, so we're not really sure what to make of that. Huh. Although, now that we have Miss Farina helping us, maybe we should take the opportunity to get everyone back together. What opportunity? What do you mean? <laughs> maybe you're unaware, but your name has always been like a rallying cry for us. Our director was constantly singing your praises. All of us look up to you as a role model. <laughs> oh, stop! You're making me all flustered. <laughs> Although, <laughs> not in a bad way. Um, I suspect the reason they're dragging their feet is that they have their doubts about whether the show will really go ahead, considering all the issues you've been facing. But one by one, all the obstacles are being removed. Now is the time to rally the troops. Makes sense. Okay, priority number one, let's check in with Paulo and see where he's at with the ending. He went back to Poisson a few days ago, said that staying in a friend's home might help him to relax and escape the feeling of isolation. I thought the last thing his friend would want right now would be to take visitors, given that Poisson was flooded not too long ago. But... I guess it's the opposite. A friend in need and all that. Yeah, maybe I could use some company. Poisson? Nothing. I suppose my presence will be indispensable if we are to restore his faith in the show. So, allons-y. To Poisson! If I remember correctly, this is where he's staying. Who is it? It's me. Is the script ready? You came all the way here for that? Uh, Alright, forget that for now. Just come on out. We've got some great news. <sighs> nice try. Look, just give me some time, okay? I'm just wrapping up this last part of the script. I'll be out once I'm done. Okay then. Looking forward to your masterpiece. So, as expected, he's missed the deadline. <sighs> the ending is one of the most important parts of the show. Even once he's done, it isn't final until we've all had the chance to read through and make sure we agree on it. Hmm, someone told me they'd just seen you in Poisson. I assumed it was a case of mistaken identity, but sure enough, here you are. And Farina, too. <sighs> I was wondering if we might run into her. So, you're here for Palo? Looks like he could be a while, so feel free to take a stroll around town in the meantime. I've made all the arrangements already. Oh, it's okay. We can just wait here. Uh, thank you for being so considerate, Miss Navia. That sounds wonderful. We'll take that stroll. Get over here, you! How oblivious are you? How are things in Poisson now? Any better? Things are on the mend, but it's a slow process. Some people may never recover from the trauma they experienced. I'm sorry to hear that. I wish there was something I could do. Please, must our conversations take such a depressing turn every time we meet? We all have painful memories. But we don't have to let them cloud everything we do. And if you're trying to make a new start, perhaps it's best if you don't bring up the past all the time. Thank you for your words of comfort. You make a very good point. But for now, at least, I think I should stay with the way I'm feeling for a while longer. It's okay. These things take time. Moving on from a painful experience is easier said than done. Which... Brings me to why I'm here. I thought you should probably know that not everyone here is ready to forgive and forget, 
after the Hydro Archon's inaction in the face of catastrophe. To avoid upsetting the peace, I told the townspeople that everyone here is a member of the theater troupe, and that you are just an actress playing the role of Farina. It's not a perfect solution, but hopefully it means you won't have to lie low while you're here. That's so thoughtful of you, Navia! Well, what do you expect? I am the courageous and considerate president of Spina di Rosula, after all, like my father before me. Anyway, that was all. Look after her now. Off we go then. Let's take a look up there. I don't have any friends that I can be frank and honest with, so maybe she's right. You're the closest thing to friends that I have. I'm so grateful that Miss Nafia was so understanding. To be perfectly honest, I didn't know if I was ready to meet her. It's always easiest to just run away from your problems. But that never fixes anything. You can't get around the obstacles without facing them. So that's why you were nervous when they brought up Poisson. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared of coming back here. Still, I felt it was something I had to do. As I was saying before, I want to see for myself the things that I never could in the past. I'd be overjoyed if the people here could find it in their hearts to forgive me, but they're more likely to unleash a tirade of vitriol against me, which, of course, I completely understand and accept. Yeah, I can tell people are watching me. I'm sure some people here see the idea of someone coming to Poisson dressed as the Hydra Archon as extremely disrespectful. I used to be terrified of the gaze of other people, especially when they had suspicion or resentment in their eyes. I guess I wasn't quite ready for this after all. I'm not surprised you're making yourself go through all of this. I can't let myself see only the things I want to see. How would that make me any different from before? Look! There seems to be a crowd gathering over there! Probably time we made a move. How about we check out Spina di Rasula's ship? We should have a view of the whole of Poisson from there. I'm sorry. You probably just wanted a relaxing stroll, and here I am dumping all this heavy stuff on you. We don't mind. It's actually refreshing to see a different side of you. Great. Well, I appreciate your company, so please don't disappear just yet. I don't know whether you can tell, but... The years of suffering and loneliness aren't the only reason I have a hard time facing up to who I used to be. As I stand here by the ship, I can't get the images of the rising water out of my mind. One after another, people were taken by the water. All those treasured lives and memories washed out of existence in an instant. They thought their god would protect them. They had absolute faith that when disaster struck, a divine power would save them from harm. And all the while, I played my part to perfection to convince them that was true. But then the floodwaters finally came, and the Hydro Archon did nothing. You shouldn't look at it like that. You are only doing your duty. I've had to go through so many moments like that for the sake of protecting the truth. As time went on, it got harder and harder to bear, and I became more lonely and isolated. Eventually, I realized I had nothing left except the truth. 
I became terrified of completely failing in my task and was haunted by the thought of being left all alone, weeping on my throne. Fortunately, we were able to avoid the worst case scenario thanks to the help of heroic individuals such as yourselves. Everyone rose to their responsibilities, and I finally regained my freedom. But, on some level, freedom also means no longer being needed. I have no further use to people. Hmm. Lima would have never imagined you'd see it that way. A reward? I guess so. And back then, I didn't even dare to dream about having someone to confide in. I was scared of someone recognizing me for who I truly was, and exposing the secret I swore to protect. Believe in the Farina you see on stage. She is the one you can trust. I had to keep all my feelings, all my curiosity about life to myself. No one could be allowed to know. That's what I really meant when I said I'm no good at maintaining relationships. So that's where you were coming from. Paimon totally thought you were just a bit of a diva at heart. <sighs> Could you please get off my case? I don't know what's gotten into you today. I'm making an effort here. You could at least try to do the same. <sighs> I do. I once had nothing but the truth, and now, I'm finally free to live my own life again. And even though I have no idea where I'm going right now, at least the choice is in my hands. Alright, it's about time to head back. Polo should have finished the ending by now. Sure! Okay, let's head back and check it out! Didn't you say you needed to watch what you eat? You're supposed to be cutting down on fried foods, not wolfing down copious quantities of fish and chips, you know? Ah, uh, come on. It's not every day we get to dine at Spina di Rosula's expense. Can you believe how generous she is? I'm not about to pass on free food. Anyway, my character doesn't need to be slim and good-looking. That's your job. Are you kidding me right now? It's not your character's health I'm worried about, it's yours! I've spent my whole life battling the effects of ill health, and it kills me to watch you willingly ruin yours by filling yourself up with junk all the time. Oh no, looks like they're arguing again. We're back! Could you maybe put your differences aside for a moment? Ah, you're back. We've been enjoying Spina di Rosula's VIP treatment in your stead. <laughs> Paulo's nearly done. We shouldn't have to wait too much longer. Great! So you were discussing your characters, right? We heard she's playing the Oceanid who turns into a human girl. What about you? Me? I'm an Oceanid too. He was originally supposed to take the form of a crane, but he... <clears throat> outgrew that role. Well, the costume at least. So now he's playing the boar instead. The boar's not a bad character, actually. He's the one who raises the little Oceanid, yes? That's right. He has some pretty memorable lines, too. Like when he imparts some solemn words of wisdom to the little Oceanid. If you become human, you can reveal your secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this truly what you want? Wait, that sounds kind of familiar. It's the most important line in the whole script. I think it's a symbolic statement about our director's life and legacy. She kept quiet about all the trials and tribulations she faced in running our troupe, allowing us to devote ourselves fully to performing. It was only after she was gone that we realized how tough her job really was. You mentioned earlier that the troupe is like your home. Yeah. I was born with an incurable illness, and once my family found out it couldn't be treated, they decided they didn't want me anymore. 
I spent some years taking whatever work I could find and trying to manage my illness with various medicines. But whenever I had a bad flare-up, I'd be lying in an alleyway for days at a time. It was like that until the director found me one day. She told me I had a great voice and asked if I was interested in studying singing from her. I said yes. She took me under her wing, taught me to both sing and act, helped me find Mora for my meds, took care of me when my condition decided to flare up. <sighs> I know it was all a huge burden on her. She sounds like a really incredible person. She really was. She gave everything she had to her troop and the people in it. All of us were so proud to call her our director. I was a lost child too when she found me. As the child of a murderer, my parents weren't around when I was little, so I got sent to an orphanage. The other kids were always picking fights with me. They'd say things like, Come on, you must be pretty tough if you're the son of a murderer. It was just to taunt me though. I was an easy target and they knew it. One day, I got beaten up so bad that I just couldn't take it anymore, so I ran away. I lost all faith in humanity by that point. Thought the whole world was out to get me. Hmm, let me guess. Fortunately, the next person you ran into was the director. Yeah, for the first time in my life, I was somewhere I felt safe. And I promised myself I'd stay here until the day the group parted ways. The day you hoped would never come. <sighs> How times change. Oh, you're finally done? <laughs> Get your butt over here. There's someone I need to introduce you to. This is our new artistic consultant, Miss Farina. Farina? The Farina? Oh my god, how did you manage to wrangle that? Uh, please, the honor is all mine. I was profoundly moved to hear about your troop and your wonderful director. I just wanted to do something to help. Same here! Even so, this is just... Oh, well, uh, I'm sorry. I'll try to calm down. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, the script, of course. Uh, let me give you a rundown of how the story unfolds in my version of the script. I'm sure you're already familiar with the beginning of the story. A little Oceana decides she wants to become a human against the wishes of her family. She finds love and friendship in the bustling city. But then, disaster strikes. The people start to notice that all the fresh water in the surrounding area is slowly disappearing. The soil is becoming arid. Plants and flowers are withering. And the people begin to panic. The little Oceanid, Cleo, and her lover decide to do something about it and investigate the truth of the matter together. In the end, they discover that all the waste and pollution created by humans over the years has caused the fresh water to flee the land, as if driven by a consciousness of its own. Consciousness? You mean the water is sentient? Water as a conscious entity. There's actually quite a few stories that explore this theme. Since the little Oceanid is a water spirit, she immediately understands how the water is feeling. She then tells her lover about her true identity, as well as the truth behind the crisis. Her lover accepts her for who she is, and works with her to find a way to bring the water back. However, unbeknownst to them, there were some people eavesdropping when she revealed her secret. The little Oceanid is accused of being directly responsible for driving the water away and faces the greatest dilemma of her life. And then? In the end, she makes the brave decision to sacrifice herself to save her lover and the rest of humanity. Huh? But didn't they all treat Cleo like a villain? Why would she want to save them after that? Well, she mainly wanted to save her lover, plus everyone who'd stood up for her. Through her love for her human partner, she was able to find an even greater love. One that extended to all of humanity. Surely the biggest strength of Cleo's character. There's actually something else that bothers me. You know the protagonist is supposed to represent the director, right? And she never had the chance to become a hero in our world. 
if we're serious about dedicating this show to her memory, we should make the ending as true to life as possible. <sighs> what about if... The little Oceanid is hounded to death by people who hate her, her lover makes sure her secret never gets out, and humanity continues down the path to extinction. That sounds like too cruel of an ending to me. And perhaps a little irresponsible to present to the audience. That ending would be a perfect mirror to Director Aureli's death, both arbitrary and meaningless. On the day when she went missing, Director Aureli had instructed us all, somewhat out of the blue, to leave the Court of Fontaine and wait for her outside the city. We waited and waited at the rendezvous point, but she never came. By the time we returned to the city, she disappeared without a trace. We looked for her. The Gardamex looked for her, but she was nowhere to be found. Increasingly, all the signs seemed to point to her being the latest victim in the serial disappearances case. The director was the kindest soul in the world, yet she was senselessly sacrificed for the sake of a so-called experiment by someone who had nothing to do with her at all. Hmm. But doesn't the way she suddenly told you to leave the city suggest that maybe she had some sense of what was about to happen? It almost seems as if she was moving you to safety. I've been trying to follow up on that ever since. But all my efforts so far have turned up nothing. Vilmal might know something, but he won't open up to me. Vilmal? The one who's playing the role of the villain? Yeah. He's been overwhelmed by grief. I think the director's death hit him hardest of all. Grief? <laughs> Guilt, more like. Also, I have a hard time imagining that anyone took it harder than me. Because... Well, speaking of the play being true to life, I... I was deeply, madly in love with O'Reilly. What? You... you kept that one quiet. It's time to be upfront with you all. No more keeping secrets from each other. We'll never be able to agree on the ending if we can't be honest about how we feel. I did tell her how I felt once, but she turned me down pretty much straight away. She said that we were all like brothers and sisters to her, and she never considered us as potential romantic partners. Not that it came as a shock or anything. It was what I was expecting to hear. So I told her I'd always be there for the troop, and I'd always be there for her. I said, maybe one day in the future, when everyone's settled into their own lives and on the up and up, and managing the troop no longer required her constant attention, well... Maybe then she could reconsider what she really wanted in her life. And now, that day will never come. Oh, Paulo. So if I'm the one writing this ending, then I'm going to make sure it does right by O'Reilly. I won't let anyone get in the way of that. In that case, you have to straighten things out with Vilmont once and for all, face to face. We've all had our differences of opinion over the ending, but those two have never seen eye to eye on anything. One of them has to compromise if we're ever going to reach a final decision. Well, if that's where we're at, looks like it's time to go visit Vilmo. Are you ready to face the truth? Honestly, I'm slightly terrified. But for the sake of our final performance, I'll do whatever it takes. Funny you should ask, though. You really do get what I'm going through right now. I certainly do. Come on, everyone. Allons-y! Ugh, oh, as if this journey wasn't tough enough already without a roadblock. Don't worry, we should all be fine with the Traveler here. We don't need to take a detour. Uh, wait, why are you all looking at me? You're not seriously expecting me to fight, are you? We're just curious, that's all. I don't think anyone's ever seen Farina in a fight before. Yeah, but... Don't you remember why? The Hydro Archon willingly gave up all her power so it could be converted into Indemnidium. Miss Farina said so herself. 
Precisely. <laughs> and I'm not even the Hydro Archon anymore, so all my power is gone anyway. Um, as much as it pains me, unfortunately, I should just stay put. I'm more like a uh, damsel in distress more than anything. That sounded so smug. Ugh, secondhand embarrassment is unbearable. Hey, lay off, all right. My bluff is hanging from a thread here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got carried away. Please help us out, would you? Aw, too bad. I was so pumped to feast my eyes on fight mode for Rena. Sorry to leave all the heavy lifting to you. No worry, piece of cake. Vilma, are you there? Huh? Oh, it's you guys. Wait, what's Lady Farina doing here? I can explain. We've been rounding up the whole troop. We now have everyone except you. So, you think knowing the truth about the director's disappearance will help you write an ending to the script that pleases everyone? I cared just as much as everyone else about making the Little Ocean a success. That's why I wanted to wait until after the show. If I open this can of worms now, I, I just don't want to make things difficult between us. We're supposed to be a unit when we're on stage. The Amo, avoiding the truth will not help anyone. Unless you mean to suggest that O'Reilly's death had something to do with you. I don't want to talk about it. Listen, Vimal. I used to think that my love for Aureli was a point of shame. I never brought it up to anyone. But now, I've made up my mind to put it all on the table. I'm prepared to face everything, to sacrifice everything, for the sake of the show. The little Oceanid cannot be complete unless we do justice to Aureli on an emotional level. <sighs> this is why people think of you as not being the smart one. <laughs> as you all know already... The troupe was kept afloat not from ticket sales, but donations from the audience. Of course, that was nowhere near enough. We took on side jobs when we weren't performing, but even then, the troupe's financial situation was pretty dire. So, anyway, one day after a show, a merchant came to me and offered us a huge sponsorship. In return, we just had to provide the audience with their drinks during performances. It seemed like a win-win, so I said yes to it on the spot without consulting the director. It was only when the merchant came to deliver the goods that I realized the drink in question was synth. Isn't that the drink paddled by the culprit behind the serial disappearances case? I, I freaked out when I saw the boxes, and I told the director everything right away. She was completely shocked as well. But she didn't reprimand me for making the decision without consulting her. Instead, she contacted the merchant and stated that the troupe could not agree to this collaboration. The merchant was furious, berated us for going back on our word, and threatened to sue us for damages. The amount was astronomical. There was no way we'd be able to pay. <laughs> and then... I was going to sort it on my own, but the director stopped me. She said that this was an issue for the whole troop, and it wasn't my fault. But things only got worse from there. The synth merchant just wouldn't let up, and then suddenly the director told us all to leave the city one day. I knew then that things must have reached a boiling point. I admit this whole thing was my mistake. I didn't dare to tell any of you the truth back then, and after the director disappeared, I was even more afraid to say anything. Yeah, I got Aureli killed. There, I said it! Happy now? Hey, don't say that. You traitor! You knew Aureli was in danger! Why in God's name didn't you tell us? What do you mean, you were afraid? 
This was a life and death situation. We could have saved her. How could you be so stupid? Please, try not to get too worked up. Yeah, listen to him. You need to stay calm. Stay calm? How can I stay calm? This guy got all Rayleigh murdered. She was the love of my life. And he has the gall to try and high-road us, claiming that he kept his mouth shut for the sake of the show. How about taking some responsibility for what he's done? All I can say is I'm sorry. Truly. I wanted to apologize to everyone in the troupe, but that won't bring back the director. What good is my apology now? I'm just a coward who made an awful, terrible mistake that I can never take back. Beat me up if you want. Kill me if you prefer. It's what I deserve. End my life. So I can meet the director and apologize to her in person. Get out of my sight. Go, get lost. I don't ever want to see your face again. That's enough. You've screamed and shouted at each other for long enough. Now pipe down, both of you! Can you stop conflating the show on stage with your real-life relationships in the troupe? You keep saying that you want to use this final performance to pay tribute to your director and celebrate her life. How can you do that if you're just using it as an excuse to vent your own emotions? <sighs> you're right. I'm sorry. <sighs> on stage. The lead role is the focal point of the audience's attention. And you're all used to seeing the director as the heart of the troupe. But in her own life, her greatest desire wasn't to be the center of attention. I can tell how much she loved you all, and how much she loved the troupe. What she wanted was to build a warm home for all of her brothers and sisters. To shield you all from the storms that rage in the world outside. That's how you should remember her, and that's what you should be celebrating. I understand why you're trying to make her the hero of the story, but isn't she your hero already? After everything she did for you? Yeah. So think hard about what that means, and then think again about what you hope to achieve by arguing with each other. If you really hate each other, and can't reconcile your differences, then you could just call it quits now. Why bother with the final performance if the group is already fractured? But you can't bring yourself to do that, can you? You care too much about Director O'Reilly and the home she built you all to let go. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I don't see what's so funny. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that... For a moment there, it, it felt like our director was back with us again. If she'd seen Paulo and Vilmont at each other's throats like that, she would have scolded them exactly like you did, in that same stern voice. Really? But she sounded like such a gentle person. Of course she was. Even her harshest lectures came from a place of kindness, and it showed. She really was a truly outstanding person. I... What you said, it really puts everything into perspective. I'm truly sorry. I really meant for this to be a genuine apology, but I ended up making it all about me and my self-pity. It's all right. Let's save all this for after the performance. So, the ending, what are we going to do about it? Clearly, everyone needs to take a step back for now and reflect on what really matters. When emotions are running high, things get lost in the fray. The end of the story needs to focus back on O'Reilly herself. She's the true star of the show. What do you mean? The Traveler is right. You once investigated that underwater synth base and recovered items belonging to the victims. If you could find anything that O'Reilly left behind, uh, perhaps we can get a better sense of what she went through in her final days. You really think that's possible? I trust that nobody would object to the ending of the story being based on O'Reilly's true feelings? No. Well, 
We'll leave this in your capable hands. Come, let's pay a visit to the Palais Mermonia. The rest of you, head back to the rehearsal location for now and wait for our good news. You want to review some recovered items connected to victims of the serial disappearances case? But, um, that case has been closed for quite a while now. Still, since you were the ones who discovered and submitted the evidence in the first place, you don't actually have to submit an application. <laughs> okay, please hold on. I'll have someone dig them out. So, this is all O'Reilly left behind. Just whatever she was carrying on her person and this tattered old notebook. It's full of script lines! And sketches too! Looks like they show where the different props should be placed on stage! Let me take a look. Maybe there's something in here from after she was kidnapped. Mm. Aha! I found something. To whoever discovers this diary. Let's see. Looks like she kept a detailed record of her captor's actions. She even mentions the truth behind the experiments on dissolving young women. If we'd had the chance to examine this notebook carefully back then, it would have been a conclusive piece of evidence proving Vache's guilt. Vache took so many lives. It's still so unthinkable how many victims he had. I guess O'Reilly must have written all of this down in the hope that her records would one day be of use to investigators. Uh, wait, it cuts off. Her handwriting here gets patchier and more illegible by the line. She probably didn't have much strength left. Her final words are... I'll let you read them for yourselves. She was so terrified. She may have been a mighty hero in the eyes of her troop, but at the end of the day, she was only human. I can't bear to think how painful and lonely her final days must have been. Uh, wait. This part on the last page sounds strangely familiar. If you become human, you can reveal your secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this still what you want? Isn't that the most important line in the little Oceanid? Because I am an older sister to them. Oh. So she didn't regret her decision. Even as she sat in silence waiting for death to come. I'm sure this is what the troop would have hoped to hear as well. She had their utmost trust, admiration, and love, and she truly deserved it. <sighs> Let's go. It's time for them to learn Director O'Reilly's final thoughts. She deserves a hero's farewell. If that's the only way to convey to the audience the courage and selflessness that she showed in the face of death, then it's a meaningful way to end the story. Even in the last moments of her life, she was still leaving a trail for others to follow. She did her best to protect as many people as possible, even if it meant sacrificing herself. We know what choice our little Oceanid would have made now, I don't think any more discussion is necessary. <sighs> well, Philmont, if we put the past aside for now, do you think you can bring yourself to go ahead with the show? 
I will channel all my regret and put it into my performance to make this a show worthy of our director. I won't ask for your forgiveness, and you don't need to worry about my feelings. This final farewell show should be about Director Aureli and her alone. <sighs> then it seems like we've reached a consensus. I have a feeling that this will turn out to be the most mesmerizing performance of your lives. Really? How can you be so sure when you've never even seen them perform before? <laughs> Don't underestimate my experience. <laughs> After watching a countless number of musicals, I've learned one important thing. If you want to move the audience with your music, you must fully commit and immerse yourself in your role, pouring all your emotion into your performance. And aren't human emotions, love, hate, regret, and hope, just the most mesmerizing things in this world? I don't believe anybody could be more committed to bringing this story to life on the stage than they are now. Thank you for the vote of confidence, Miss Farina. And thank you for supporting us through all this. Then, let's not delay things any longer. We need to discuss the details of the ending and get it nailed down once and for all. Actually, before that, I'd like to make a proposal. During the curtain call, please allow me to use the director's name instead of my own. Huh? But then... After all, this role was originally meant to be played by the director. I'm just filling in for her. Besides, a role commemorating her life should be associated with her name. Well, if you're sure you're okay with that, I have no objection to it. <laughs> now we're talking like a serious acting troupe. All right, I'll leave you to fine tune your musical while I go and procure a stage. Procure a stage? Oh, it's okay. Our usual place doesn't need a reservation. That place? Oh, don't be silly. For an extraordinary show, we need an extraordinary stage. By which I, of course, mean the Opera Epicles. Whoa, wait, what? No, 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 that's never going to work. It's far too fancy for the likes of us. What are you afraid of? Surely you don't think that O'Reilly's story is unworthy of the grandest stage in Fontaine. <sighs> no, th that's not what I meant. It is supposed to be your grand finale, right? I have no problem with it, then. How about the rest of you? I'll take your silence as a yes! <laughs> Thank you for giving us this opportunity. It really is a dream come true. Well, then don't disappoint me. If you mess this up, it'll reflect poorly on me, too. <laughs> Come on! We'll need to get the go-ahead from Nervilet. I know just where to find him. I knew you'd be here. I'm here merely for a short break. It has been a while, Miss Farina. And you too, Traveler and Paimon. What might I assist you with today? I would like to book the Opera Epicles for an event. You see... I understand. Hmm. The process for booking the Opera Epicles is complex and can be somewhat cumbersome. But given that the request is coming from the three of you, I see no reason to make things unduly difficult. The story of the little Oceanid is most fascinating. I'm looking forward to seeing it performed on stage. I will say, however, that I am surprised to see your passion for the performing arts rekindled after all that has happened. Huh? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> Do I look excited? Yes. And this is the first time that I've seen you like this since your departure from deityhood. At first, I just felt bad about rejecting them. So I wanted to learn a little bit more about their situation. But one thing led to another, and... Well, here we are. 
In the past, we sat in our high chairs in the court, giving our opinions on isolated cases, all while knowing very little about the human stories behind each and every one. Maybe it's because I finally become an ordinary person and gained my freedom, but I've developed a great sense of curiosity about their lives. I am truly delighted to see you find a new lease on life. Now that you've regained some confidence, have you had any thoughts regarding a return to the stage? Why would you suddenly ask a question like that? Well, if the little Ocean it turns out to be a great success, it will no doubt become a classic. Many theater companies are certain to add it to their repertoire. The experiences and decisions of the protagonist Cleo are all modeled after your own. Naturally, this makes you eminently suited to playing the leading role. It would truly be a shame if you did not take this opportunity to allow audiences to enjoy your outstanding acting talents once more. Haven't I already made myself clear? I won't act or perform in any role ever again. No exceptions. Nor do I think it is any great shame. There is no lack of fine actors or inspirational stories, either on or off the stage. This experience is a case in point. I feel like I've learned a lot, and it has already been well worth the price of admission. I must admit, though, I'm a little envious. <laughs> They're quite fortunate to be able to bid farewell to their past in such a magnificent manner. I see. Well, I'm glad to learn that you have found a role to play that you enjoy, be it on the stage or not. I sincerely hope the show will serve as the grandest of finales. I will have my staff book the date and mail the relevant paperwork to the troupe once the details are confirmed. Thanks, Nervalette. You are very welcome. Good news, everyone. It's done. The Opera Epiclès is booked. Thanks to my eloquent and impassioned speech, Monsieur Nervalette was moved to provide us with a fitting stage for this special performance. We've had to fight every step of the way for this opportunity, but we now have all of the ingredients necessary to stage a truly spectacular performance. A touching story, a magnificent venue, and last but not least, a passionate and dedicated cast. Now, let's work together and make this show the best it can be. <laughs> this is truly wonderful. The sooner we can finalize the ending, the more time we'll have to rehearse. Fiumali and I just went over some parts of the script and tweaked a few things. I think it's really going to resonate with the audience now. Wow, you two had a constructive conversation? That's great! Communication is vital to any good performance. <laughs> Look at us! We've come so far! I never could have pictured this scene a few days ago. It's amazing! Farina's still being a bit of a drama queen about it all. She's really fired everyone up! Please feel free to give us any comments or suggestions you have. We really value your input. Hey, Loic, get over here! Time to practice the opening number. Cursed Cleo. She stole the waters of life from us. She's a fraud, and she must pay for her crimes. This has nothing to do with her. The ignorance and hatred of our people is to blame. How can we hope to win back the water's favor if we don't change our ways? This guy could be useful. Take him hostage. If Cleo wants him back, she'll have to show herself. Leave this place, oh little Oceanid, and never, ever look back! Everyone's really throwing themselves into their roles. I haven't seen such a fine performance in a long time. <sighs> if 
only... What should we do? It's almost time for her to take the stage! <sighs> Why? Why does it have to be now? Hey, what's going on? You're due on stage any second now. Oh no, not again. But why? What about your new meds? Did they stop working? They've... been getting less and less effective over time. I've had to keep increasing my dose. What? I thought they cure it. So they were only managing your symptoms? I figured... whatever it took to get me through this final performance. How could you do this to yourself? And after that lecture you gave me about not looking after my health. I'm sorry. I've let everyone down. You... <sighs> this is a conversation for another time. How can the show go on without its star performer? Uh... Miss Farina? I'd like to make a request of you. Say no more. If you're sick, you need to rest. I know what you're going to ask. Loic, your character has no more scenes, correct? Oh, uh, yeah. I think my scenes are all done. Although, I do have one more line. But I guess another guy in the troupe with a similar voice register could take it. Why? Please take Dolphy back to her place to rest. I'll sing the finale. <sighs> From the sublime to the ridiculous. After all that, everything's come full circle. Thank you, Miss Farina. I'm so sorry to put you in this position after everything you said. Never mind. What's done is done. It's really my own fault for getting in too deep. <laughs> no one likes regrets, myself included. Leave it to me. I've watched you rehearse so many times that I've learned Cleo's part by heart. I do not doubt your acting skills, but please allow me to ask just one more question. After all, this show is dedicated to the life and legacy of our director. What, in your opinion, is the reason Cleo shines so brightly? It's her pure heart. Despite all the pain and loneliness she had to endure, she never once stopped believing in the beauty in this world. Well said. I leave Director O'Reilly in your hands. secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this truly what you want?
Is it just me? Or was that Lady Farina on the stage just now? She hasn't been seen for a while now. And she just appears out of nowhere? Gotta say, though, her acting skills are as superb as ever. The Little Oceanid, Cleo, played by Aurélie Fumon. Wait, that's not her name. What's going on? I don't know. Maybe it's just a doppelganger. I've spent a lot of time out of the spotlight, and they didn't use my name during the curtain call either. Hopefully, not too many people recognized me. It's too bad that I had to break the one clear rule I'd managed to make for myself, even if I had no choice. Still, I have to admit that, despite everything, it felt good to be back on the stage again. Finally, we would like to give a special thanks to our artistic consultant and event coordinator, Miss Farina. not what we agreed on! Oh! So it was Farina after all. She's back! Uh, honestly, what is he doing? He should have run that by me first! Alright, calm down. Don't be mad. This was a group decision. We just didn't want your contributions to go unacknowledged. After all, it's been the rule in Fontaine since ancient times that everyone's work, visible or invisible, is equally deserving of recognition. Yes, I know the rule, but... but... Uh, it should still be applied on a case-by-case -case basis! I wasn't ready for this yet. Ah, uh, it's no big deal. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, yeah? Well, since you think it's so easy, you can sign them for me. This is a great chat and all, but can we talk about that crazy thing that happened during the show? It nearly gave Paimon a heart attack. Paimon flew over to where she was supposed to be and was about to drop the prop vision, and then suddenly, a real one popped out of thin air! Oh, uh, that... <laughs> I've got no idea what happened there either. But hey, it worked pretty well, didn't it? I'll bet the audience has never seen such a realistic prop. Wait, what about Dolphy? I wonder how she's doing. Oh, uh, let's go check on her as soon as we finish clearing the stage. Yes. Plus, she'll definitely want to hear how the end of the show went. If nothing else, we can safely say that we accomplished what we set out to do. Ah, you're back. She's doing okay. Her condition stabilized after taking some of her original medication. From experience, though, I'd say she still needs a few more days of rest. How did the performance go? Was it a success? Did the audience like it? You'll be glad to know it was fantastic! Also, you're not gonna believe what happened while Farina was on the stage! You'll probably be able to read all about it in the Steambird first thing tomorrow morning! That's wonderful. I'm so sorry I failed to see it through to the end. I guess I was wrong to try and tough it out to begin with. Oh, <laughs> don't worry about it. Like they told me after announcing my name during the curtain call, everyone's work deserves recognition. Even though you couldn't see it through to the final scene, the audience was very impressed by your performance. It's safe to say that you made your mark on this memorial show. <laughs> well, one way or another, we did it. I've had bad luck ever since I was born, so I never expect things to go smoothly in life. I'm just happy to know that we went out on a high note. That's all that matters. Blaming your bad luck again, are we? Maybe if you didn't push yourself past your limits so much, your illness wouldn't be flaring up all the time. Oh, don't you start. I don't have the energy to argue with you right now. Aw, you two clearly care a lot about each other. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You mean, we never stop arguing with each other. Any 
plans for the next step? After the brilliant performance you put on, the reputation of your troop is sure to spread through Fontaine like wildfire. You won't have to disband if you don't want to. You could capitalize on the rave reviews and license out the little Oceanit to the bigger theater troops out there. That would do wonders for your financial situation. No, we should still disband. Yeah, it's what we all agreed to. After all this happened, I should give you guys some space. But maybe our paths will cross again one day. I still want to keep performing, so I might join another troupe. After watching Miss Farina's performance, I think I'm starting to understand our director's infatuation with musicals. <laughs> you should do it. It suits you. I'd originally hoped to keep performing too, but I don't know if my health will allow me to. Oh, so now you finally got your priorities in order. I guess I'll hold off until you've properly recovered as well. What about you, Miss Farina? Any future plans? Well, frankly, I think a return to obscurity is no longer an option for me. I'm sure a slew of consultancy requests will hound me wherever I go until I finally acquiesce. You rather sealed my fate there with your special thanks at the end of the show. Sorry. It's quite all right. No need to apologize. What I meant to say is that this whole experience has shown me that perhaps I'm not as averse to a return to the stage as I'd previously imagined. Maybe Nervilette was right. Maybe Cleo is the right role for me. I still don't wish to pretend to be someone else, but I do have a desire to express myself. So, Maybe the show will go on for me after all. Yeah, there was once a time when I was an actress in a masquerade, seeking only to hide the truth. But from now on, I want to spend my time learning real stories about real people and how they touch the lives of others around them. I want to watch them blossom and wither, see them refined on the page, retold on the stage and remembered long into the future. I'm sure this is what captivated director O'Reilly as well. Sounds like you're ready to stop running from your true calling. The more you get out into the world, the more you'll discover what a fascinating place it is. <laughs> then it's a deal. If a vision is a gift from the gods, then I should do my best to honor it. It's ironic to think that in my whole time as a god, I could only ever dream of receiving this kind of power. And now that the gods have given me their blessing, it actually feels more like I'm finally able to take my fate in my own hands. Is... is that how humans feel about it as well? I'm just finishing packing up. As soon as I'm done, I've got an interview with the Steambird to get to. Thanks to all your help, this show was more perfect than we ever could have hoped for. But most of all, I want to thank you for giving me the chance to finally say farewell to Aureli. Thank you so much. I feel like I've rekindled the passion I had when I first joined the troupe. It might turn out to be too little, too late for me. But still, this has been the experience of a lifetime. Now that the buzz has worn off, I feel ready to pass out. I mean, of course I have some regrets, but... 
There'll be plenty of opportunities in the future for us to tell the stories that we want on stage. 